All right, all right, all right, guys. I know it is a miracle. It is a blessing. It is 9.02, and we are actually on time and going live. I know there's a ton of people that are out there uh, waiting to hear this special broadcast tonight, and uh, that's a great thing. We're uh, going to have on a controversial guest tonight, um, somebody that we're not uh, typically used to having on. But, you know, here at the All Rights Matter show, we like to make sure that we try to be fair and impartial as much as possible. Now, that's also based on the fact that I am a human and I do have my own views and opinions regarding situations. But at the same token, we like to make sure that this is a platform where people, the uh, you know, that are out there in the Patriot community uh, it, it, or any other community that's any kind of activist based community, uh, you know, they have a clear voice. And our guest tonight is somebody that is uh, in many ways in my conversation with him. Uh, he's uh, felt like he's been wronged. He's been mischaracterized um, and he feels like he hasn't really been given the opportunity to have a voice um, to speak out and, and to say what his side of the story is regarding incidents that have happened in the, uh, the past and is present as uh, the Oregon standoff situation. Now, in all fairness, I'll say before I introduce uh, the special guest tonight that um, uh, I have covered a video on him, a video that has uh, placed him in the category of an informant from the Oregon standoff. And the only reason that I placed him in that category is because of his own words on revolution radio. So we'll be talking about some of that tonight. Um, and he'll be clarifying if you will, some of that, and, uh, we'll, we'll judge it together. And towards the end of the conversation, we'll, we'll actually have an open, uh, live call session here where you'll call in, you'll be able to, uh, speak with, uh, our guest and, you know, ask any kind of questions that you want. So, uh, without further ado, uh, we have Kevin Patrick Prius. Are you here, Kevin? Yeah, I'm here. And it's uh, actually Proof. Oh, okay, Proof. Like Bruce Pru- with a P. Yeah. Proof with a P. Is that right? Yeah, no, it's like Bruce with a P. All right. So just Proof. <laughs> Proof. Uh, it's like Bruce with a P. I like it. All right. So, Proof. All right. So, yeah. that means I've, I've been saying your name wrong forever. And and that's okay because, I, I you know, just to be honest with you, we haven't, we don't speak like that. The, the only time that we've actually spoken um, is last night. So I, I want to be very clear about that to everyone. This is uh, something where me and Kevin are just going to be having an open conversation on air today. And uh, we're going to allow Kevin to actually address some of these grievances that he has uh, with the Patriot community and, and what he uh, calls unfair treatment as far as uh, you know some of the allegations that have been thrown out over the course of years by several entities and groups and how all of these things have kind of smeared his name. So he's going to clarify some of that for us. Um, now, Kevin, I'm going to yeah. be honest with you, okay? All, all right. right. I, I cannot take the title of informant off of you until I'm able to understand this Oregon situation uh, clearer than what I was able to understand on uh, Revolution Radio. So... If you can, I would like to actually start at that point, and then we can touch some of the other uh, places that you, you may want to go as well. But um, I want to give our viewers, um, which is, you know, a lot of people that have been following the Oregon situation, um, I want to give them an idea of, of who you are and what you were doing there at the, uh, at, the, at the Oregon standoff, or if you will, the rallies before the standoff. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's something I actually ask myself quite often, you know, what what the hell was I called for? Why was I there? Um, you know, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, it was, I was told I was contacted by a member of the Portland Joint Terrorism Task Force uh, unit, um, asked to help because he knew uh, he was familiar with the Sugar Pine mine um, ordeal, knew a lot of the same players were at uh, Malia Refuge. And that's why he'd asked me to help. And he actually, he contacted my father. He didn't even contact me directly. Um, and said, you know, Mr. Proust, he said, can you speak to your son, please, and see if he'll help. Uh, I know he won't take a phone call from me, but maybe you could speak to him. My father did, and I gave him a call, and it did kind of went from there. It was, the way it was relayed to me was, 
Uh, we don't know the intentions of what's going on there. Uh, you know, we've heard a lot of people want violence here as far as a civil war. You know, we want to prevent that. And I got to say, when you hear it like that, I want to prevent it too. You know, I, you know, I believe there needs to be a lot of change in the country, but I will not rush to a civil war, you know, just yet. I mean, okay. it's, you know, to me, it's not the right thing to do. It's, uh, you know, and for those reasons, that's, that's why I agreed to help in, you know, pretty much any way that I could. Okay. Um, when, I, when I say that, though, I don't mean, you know, it wasn't helping just one side. I was trying, just trying to help the situation as a whole. Um, now, now, you know, like you I said, say, I, didn't, I didn't want to see any violence, any civil war, any, you know, anything escalate. Um, you know, as far as, like, the message they had and everything, uh, I have no problem with the message I have. I agree with it. Most people that I've spoken with, everybody, actually, I, I can't name one person that disagrees with it. But it was just a fact of nobody wanted to see violence. Okay, okay. Now, um, if I can just ask you kind of, uh, in the beginning you say that, um, so in this situation, when you first heard about the uh, the Oregon uh, situation, it's not something that you are preemptive preemptively looked into yourself and said, okay, hey, what's going on over there? It's something that you were actually uh, contacted through another individual uh, who was actually requesting you take a look at the situation. Uh, right, and it was because of, again, the, you know, I knew uh, some of the I'm, I'm sorry, hold on. Over there you're, and... you're breaking up a little bit. Can you, can you say that again for us? And uh, maybe you can uh, position your phone a little bit differently. Yeah, I said, um, yeah, I was contacted again by, you know, the third party there, JTTF, Joint Terrorism Task Force, and I, I knew nothing of the um, the standoff or, you know, even the rally. Um, you know, I had my own stuff going on, and because I knew, uh, you know, some of the players that were there that were at the rally um, okay. and were trying to do the standoff, that's why, you know, I was asked to help. Okay, okay. Um, now, when you say help... Um... And I and I understand what you're saying as far as um, as far as what you're saying as far as okay, you were asked to help in the light of um, keep a tab on this individual over here, um, or not really any particular individual. Maybe I, I don't know. You you can tell us that, but uh, keep a tab on the situation and uh, make sure that things are uh, are going as planned or, you know, things aren't going awry. Now, in this helping right. that you were doing, um, you know, were, were you at any time, you know, first of all, let me say this. Who were you helping? Who, who was the help for? Was the help for uh, those who had contacted you to be there or was the help for the people that were on the ground? Yeah, you know, well, from my standpoint, it was help. Oh, I mean, I see what you're saying. It was um, terrorism task force. I never, I never met with anybody on the ground out there. Okay. Uh, it all went from a guy through out of his Portland office, who, uh, you know, I've heard rumors that he ended up out there, but I don't know for sure. Um, okay. Not made upset my business, and not like anybody could tell me anyways. But so everything that I did was, you know, communicating through text to phone calls and. Uh, I was only asked about one person, uh, if this one person was there, uh, out of respect to that one person and the whole situation, I, it's probably best I don't mention his name. Um, you know, I'm not sure on that, if it's good or not to mention it. But um, other than that, it was basically, they didn't know, uh, as it was put to me, they had no idea what the intentions were. Uh, they had heard rumors that, um, you know, people wanted violence and they were, they were looking for a fight. And I was basically just asked to... You know, listen, you know, if if that's what people wanted, how many people are there, is it, you know, they, they just simply didn't know. And, you know, at the time, I guess I, I believed them. Um, I don't know if I do now. Um, you know, I have no idea. I don't know what to think, really, to be honest with you. Okay. It's a, it's a situation I wish I was never in, and, you know. Now, did you... Here we are. In any kind of way, when you were contacted, did you feel like... Um, uh, you know, because, and, and this is not to really bring up um, too much of the past uh, as far as what you were, um, 
you know, as far as other things that you, you, you know, people could easily type your name in online and find out right. other things you've been involved in. Now, during those situations in the past, um, did you have any dealings with the JTTF back then as far as helping out with those situations? Or was this like a first time that they were asking uh, for your help? No, uh, during the, the Sugar Pine um, mine incident, they contacted me over, um, they put out a, the miners or wood keepers that they uh, wanted poster for me, an illegal one. And that's when I was contacted by the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Uh, and I met with the men at the uh, State Police Office in Salem, Oregon. Uh, said, are you aware of this? wanted poster and very sad I was like oh my god you know what, what the hell is this about I figured I was going to get in trouble and first words out of my mouth were I didn't, I didn't do anything I didn't steal the miners defense fund money and he said relax he said I know he said I didn't I didn't know if you were aware of the poster or not it's a, you know a dangerous situation and you know what is this about and I explained the whole you know thing to him being accused uh, falsely accused of stealing that money and he said, yeah, no, I don't mean that. He said, $1,800 is a lot of money. What's it really about? And you know, he just said, I guess probably what I know. And he said, bingo. That's, that's it. And what, what did everything kind of went say? to hell from there, man. Hold on. What did you say that it was really about? What did he say bingo to? Uh, when he asked again, uh, repeated, you know, what's, what's it really about? $1,800 is not a lot of money. Uh, it's an awful, you know putting out a wine poster on somebody doing this crap is, you know, not worth the $1,800, you know, a lot of legal trouble they can get in. And so well, it would probably be information that I know that I have. And that's what he said bingo to. Mm, okay. All right. So the, yeah. the amount, the amount without really getting into that uh, too much um, from the sugar pine and said it was $1,800. And, and that's what they alleged that you took uh from the donation money that that was given for that uh, situation? Correct. Okay. And for that reason, the Oath Keepers um, it put out a wanted poster for you um, for that situation. But you're alleging that it, it wasn't just really for the $1,800. It was also because of the information that you may know about certain people, I guess, within the, the organization of the Oath Keepers? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Um, okay. What different you know, plans, if you will, that they had? Um, you know, it, it's it's hard to explain, really. I mean, it's it's not a total. You know, it's not a blanket situation where it's you know, I've got a problem with the oath keepers as three percent. It's not like that. It's literally, you know, every group. It doesn't matter if you're in school, work, church. You know, every group of people has that group of idiots. And that's where my problem was, was the one small group of idiots. And, you know, obviously they wanted to keep me quiet. And honestly, you know, the Oath Keepers, three percenters, I wanted to get the word out to them first and foremost. Um, and, you know, I like to know about these people. And, I, you know, I was blocked at every chance I had. And, if, you know, a spear campaign that was put out against me was, was pretty brutal, as you know, you could see on Google and um, YouTube. So once, you know, anytime I did get a chance to speak to somebody, they wouldn't hear the word, you know, that would come out of my mouth. They would just simply say, don't care, you know, don't want to hear it. Hmm. So okay. it was, you know, it's been pretty brutal. So, so, um, it, so you're saying that it really wasn't just the Oath Keeper, it was the Oath Keepers, three percenters, and it wasn't uh, necessarily the full organization, but people within the organization that were putting out bad things about you um, that weren't true um, and, you know, therefore causing tension for you for your future relations with people in the organizations. Exactly. And it's, um, you know, it's, again, it's something anybody can do. You know, I mean, you read something bad online, so anybody can write anything they want about somebody online. And when you're dealing with a group, you know, like, and, you know, well, any of the Patriot groups, the Oath Keepers, the Keeper Centers, I mean, they have large followings, they have a large amount of numbers. So it doesn't take too many people to, you know, take that one little spark and make it into a wildfire. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. and that's... Well, I, 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 I do, I understand I, that, but, I mean, the, my biggest problem was, 
was after being accused when I went to Oath Keeper Leadership. Uh, Joseph Price, I spoke with him and I said, hey, will you look at my side, my, my evidence? You know, you're all about due process. Well, let's see my side. You know, let me show it to you. And he would not, he refused to do that. And actually, that right there is what I had the biggest problem with. You said you went to Joseph Rice and he refused to look at your evidence? Yes. Okay. And when was that? That was that was probably some time ago. Yeah, it was what, uh, April, May 15th of last year. Um, okay. In the first few weeks of the sugar pine. Now, uh, now, uh, so, all right, now, what is your, you know, you, this evidence? Let's let's go to that. Let's let's go to the evidence. You know, so allegedly eighteen hundred dollars is what you uh, you know took from the donation fund um, from the Sugar uh, Pine Mine uh, incident. Now, what would your evidence be supporting saying that you didn't take the eighteen hundred dollars? How how could you prove that? What like what do you have that you wanted uh, uh, Joseph Rice to take a look at? that would have exonerated you from those allegations? Well, we got uh, one of the former owners of the Sugar Pine Mine, uh, Kirby Jackson, which his real name is Kelly Dale Sperling. Um, he's a big name in Oregon mining. Uh, one of the biggest frauds in the, on the planet, I mean, international. Um, and that's well documented. Even FBI has stated it. Um, if you Google search that, you could find out, you know, the FBI involvement with him. And what's his name? Um, his name is Kirby Jackson. That's what he goes by. Um, okay. His real name is Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, Dale Sperling, S-P-U-R-L-I-N-G. Oh, Sterling. Sperling with a uh, S-P. Oh, okay, okay. So he's actually become my business partner. He's somebody that I looked up to, uh, thought he was, you know, a like I said, he's like a legend in Oregon mining. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just had no idea his real name or his background. Um, but when we got involved with him, he obviously couldn't put any time towards mining because of the sugar pine uh, mess going on. He's uh, the recorder of the Belize Mining District. So he had a lot of responsibilities to do, a lot, a lot to handle with the BLM. And myself and my girlfriend had helped him. Uh, you know, we wanted to get this done and over with and get to mining. And when we were doing the donations, Kirby, well, before the donations, Kirby uh, approached us and said, you know, George Packer, he's not real good with computers. Uh, you know, you guys have a PayPal account. Can we use it uh, temporarily? And, you know, we'll go from there. And at first, my girlfriend said, no, you know, it, it only takes a minute to set one up. And he said, yeah, you know how George is. And, you know, we agreed. And I kind of pushed it towards that. I said, you know, come on, it's not a big deal. It's, you know. Because again, you know, to me, I was working with somebody that I really wanted to work with, and I thought things were going to be much different for her. But she then agreed. Um, we they started taking donations, and as they were coming in, it was daily. Uh, Kirby would call us up uh, all hours of the night. I need three hundred dollars more, four hundred dollars more, and I have all these messages, uh, you know, through Facebook uh, and through the phone. Everything saved and. It was just daily, and it was always for legal fees, legal fees, legal fees. He had to do this, he had to do that. Um, And then he told me to keep $400 uh, for myself, for travel expenses. Uh, So we'd went up to Portland. We got the miners their records uh, that they couldn't get, that supposedly they put out a bunch of FOIAs for. Um, I got those, the whole 300 and whatever pages of their records, and when I brought him the records, George Bacchus, he went nuts. He was pissed. He said, what in the hell are you doing with my records? How dare you? And this was on the day that we had met up with uh, Dakota Fred uh, from now, TV's Gold Rush. Who's, and who's we brought records, him to the mine. Whose records did you bring to him? Who was pissed about their records? From, from the BLM, George Bacchus, the Sugar Pine Mine owner, okay. one of the owners. Okay. You know, and that was a, a big problem. Uh, I guess they didn't want those records. You know, as it was told to me and in front of me and Jessica and a few other people that there was more money to be made through donations than there was through mining gold. And when I heard that statement, I mean, I I almost fell over. I could not believe it. You know, it's, you know, 
my work ethic is, you know, kind of questionable at best and on things, but when it's gold mining, man, I work harder than anybody. Anybody that I've seen, I worked my butt off. I took pride in it. And it was one of the only things, or probably the only thing in my life that I could say I really took pride in. And is, you know, that, is that gold just mining taken from me? You said Go gold mining is one of the things, only one of the things that you've taken pride in. Yeah, I mean, you know, as far as work wise, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And what year did you start gold mining? Oh boy, I'd say two thousand ten, two thousand nine. Okay. And, and is that around the time that you met a uh, 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 Kirby guy? Uh, well, I guess no, I, do you do you call him I, Kirby or do you call him Kelly? Yeah, I I call him Kirby for the most part. Uh, just I guess that's what everyone's used to. Okay, because of what everyone's used to. Okay, so it, did you meet Kirby around two thousand ten? No, I met uh, Kirby last year. Oh, okay. So your relationship with Kirby was a fresh relationship then. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that was we'd actually gotten a a mine together, well, a claim. Uh, it was called the Leopold claim, right down the road from the sugar pine mine, and. I paid for everything, got the, the paperwork ready to go, and I was contacted by Kirby, and he said, well, we've, we've got some problems here. made a, a mistake on mapping the claim out, so we're going to lose 20 acres to the adjacent claim. So okay, it's a little weird, but it sucks, whatever. And then I find out on the paperwork, he signed it, Kirby Jackson. Well, Kirby Jackson not being his legal name meant his part, uh, you know, another 20 acres, gone. And, you know, that was days before the whole donation thing. And I had questioned him on it and got nowhere with him. Just said, you know, it was an, an error. And I, I believed him. You know, he's one of the people that it's, it's really amazing. He, um, if you look him up online, you can see where he's scammed people out of, you know, he sold like fake claims, basically. And you'll so see the post from people and they'll say, you know, so furious, I want my money back. And you'll see a second post, you know, similar to the first. And then third or fourth post, you see, well, I'd settle for half the money back. I just want to go panning with Kirby again. I want to go pan for gold. You know, he's that type of person that it's, you know, he's a very interesting character, that's for sure. You know, he's one of the smartest people I've met. Um, but where he's, did you, just a, he's not a good guy. Where, where did you hear that comment from? There is more money to be made in um, donations than uh, mining gold. Did you hear that from Kirby? I heard that from George Backus, the one of the current owners of the Sugar Pine Mine. He had said it to Kirby, uh, myself, uh, Jessica was right there, and I I can't speak on behalf of Dakota Fred if he heard it or not, but he was nearby. Is Jessica um, your your girlfriend or ex girlfriend? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is she your current girlfriend now? Yeah. Okay. Um. So now. I guess he's saying this to you, this uh, Kirby uh, guy. He's saying there's more money in donations than there is mining gold because he's done this before. How would he know this? Uh, do, do you know what his history is with uh, as far as receiving donations? Uh, I really don't. I know um, just, you know, looking Kirby up and the stuff that he's done. I mean, he's. He's been in business with George Packers in the past. They've owned a couple of companies together. Um, I believe, you know, they spoke about uh, the Bundy situation an awful lot. Uh, they would know how much, you know, donation money came in through there. So let me, um, let me ask so you a question. That would be my best guess. Is just, I'm guessing the Bundy's probably got a lot in donations, and that's what they wanted. So let me, let me just ask you this then. Um, uh, you know, in doing in doing the research for uh, you know looking up the research on uh, on uh, Kirby there, and finding yeah. all this bad stuff out about him, um, prior to that, you know, prior to that when uh, he was asking to use your PayPal, how come you guys hadn't looked him up around that time frame to see you know what kind of individual is asking to get into your financial you and your lady, uh, their, your financial information to, you know, kind of circumvent the system as far as leaving a trail for himself and, uh, and blaming it on you guys because it's in, you know, your name. So did you think at well, that time I that we're making a financial decision and maybe we should, um, 
maybe look into this guy and kind of see who he is? Well, again, he's such a popular name in the mining community in Oregon, and he's, you know, he was always on, uh, still is on the front lines of fighting against the BLM. Uh, that by name alone, didn't think to dig too deep into him, but if you do a search, which we did beforehand, uh, just on Kirby Jackson, mostly good stuff comes up uh, in the okay. first few pages. You know, he's uh, he does some authoring. He does, you know, a lot of a lot of speaking. So there's a lot of good stuff, you know, about him. And then it was told to me by somebody else that, you know, that's not his real name. I said, well, I know it's not his real name, but I, I don't know his real name. So it was told to me, and and when I looked that up, that was a game changer. Okay. Um, you know, to me, I mean, this, and again, the stuff, the conversations that I have in Facebook, I mean, they're just mind-blowing. I have mean, you, have you ever the guy's could... dad. So, so let me ask you this then. You know, I, I'm... You say that the amount was about eighteen hundred dollars. I thought I seen it about for considerably more than that. Um, uh, on no, top- they had um, they have other accounts. Um, they started, um, I believe, both a PayPal and a GoFundMe. Yeah. Uh, after the ordeal with us, um, but through us, it was eighteen hundred dollars. Okay. Now. With that being said, um, have you ever paid any of that eighteen hundred dollars back? The Kirby, yeah. Like I said, daily he was. You know, I need three hundred dollars for this, four hundred dollars for this, three hundred dollars for this, and okay, okay. Uh, I'd only spoken to George no, Backus no, maybe what... half a dozen times, so everything was through you know Kirby. And again, he is um, one. He's a board member. He's the recorder well... for. Um, the Gleese Mining District. Well, what I'm saying... Uh, he was a former owner of the Sugar Pine. What I'm saying is so this. nothing was... What I'm saying ahead. is this. Have have you ever... Um, okay. After finding... After... Okay, I'm putting myself in your shoes. Now, if I'm in your shoes and I'm looking at it, I'm saying to myself, okay, um, everybody's blaming me now. and They're saying that I took the money. I know that Kirby took the money. Okay? Right. Now, with that being said, you know what group of people are blaming you. You know who took the money. Did you ever connect with those people who are saying, rah, 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 our money is taken, and say, hey, look, I didn't take it. That individual took it, but I would be more than willing to make some kind of restitution and make payments because I was kind of involved, even though it wasn't my fault. Have you ever made those amends to the individuals who had their money taken from them? Well, uh, yes, I had actually spoken to Rick Barclay, one of the other owners of the Sugar Pine Mine. We had spoken once, and things were on good terms. He wanted to see what I had. And after that, uh, our communications were blocked. And from my understanding from other Oath Keepers that were down there, former Oath Keepers, I should say, um, that they were blocked by a combination of Joseph Rice and Bruce McFarlane. Um, they they didn't want anybody talking to anybody. Basically, they didn't want my side to come out. I, you know, again, I mentioned to Joseph Rice, "Hey, look at what I have. You know, see my side." And he refused to do it. And he would just push more and more with either threats, you know, about him being former Blackwater, um, the wanted poster, uh, okay, so, and then so, just spreading it all over. Okay, so. Let's get let's get back huh, because you're you're you know you have a a lot of different things going in different directions. So, right. Let's get back to one thing in particular: this evidence. Okay. Okay. Is is there no. hard physical evidence? Because from what I'm hearing and from what I'm heard from what I've asked that question just before, is that the money was in your account. You were giving several sums to uh, 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 to uh, what's his name um, to Kirby, Kirby. Or, you know, Kelly. or Kirby, yeah, yeah, Kirby. You, you call him Kirby. So um, you're okay. giving uh, several lump sums to him as he was requesting them that you have me- messages to match that. Okay. Yes. Now, where where is this evidence? Where is it on a cell phone? Um, do you have screenshots that you maybe had printed out on a piece of paper? Where To this day, where is that evidence at? I do. I've actually, I've got it in multiple places. I've got them on a couple of hard drives, uh, thumb drives. 
uh, got everything actually printed out, um, scanned. So yeah, there's, I've got it in several places and, uh, I'm in the process of going to be uploading everything. So over, you know, the period of tonight, everything should be on there for everyone to see. Okay. Um, now, so, so I, I so want my side you, out, you know, and people can make their decision from there. Are you saying, are you saying on this show then that tonight you are going to upload evidence, direct evidence that will exonerate you and say that you did not take the money that has been alleged that you've been taking all this time and and that people will be able to see that information by just clicking on a link. We'll put the link in the description section uh, after this interview is over with. And that, that information will exonerate you uh, and, and it will prove that you weren't the one that took this money. Absolutely. Okay, okay. All right, so uh, we'll be looking forward to that link, obviously. Um, so I, I want to wrap up talking about that right now. Um, and I want to kind of go back to, um, you know, uh, back to the Oregon situation just for a second here, um, because we're going to probably do some uh, call-ins. I'm sure there's going to be some people that have some questions and stuff like that. So um, let, let's go back to the Oregon situation for a second. Okay. Now, are you yourself a point of the Joint Terrorism Task Force? No. No? Are you sure? Wait, did you ask if I'm a if I'm a member of them or? Um, what is your what role? did you ask? I'm what, sorry. Is, what is your role? Let's be more specific. What is your role okay. with the Joint Terrorism Task Force? What is your specific role, duty, and or job title? Well, I don't work for the Joint Terrorism Task Force or the FBI or any agency, that's for sure. Um, again, what I told you before is that's, that's the capacity of it. I was told that they didn't know what was going on. A lot of the same people that I had known from Trigger Pine were going to be there and just to make sure things are going to stay peaceful. Um, you know, that's, that's all they wanted to know. If, if I heard any talk about, you know, violence or civil war, and, you know, I stand by that. I do. It's... Um, that part I don't agree with, you know, and I've, I've got a problem with anybody thinking that we should rush to a civil war. Um, you know, uh, it's, if I'm a bad person for that, then so be it. But, no, no, you're not a bad person for that. Now, when you say they, um, uh, you know, to me that implies maybe that there's um, a few contacts or people that you talk to from the JTTF. Um, is it is it that way? Like, is like a group of people that you confer with when you talk to the JTT, uh, JTTF? Or is it uh, one? No, uh, it, was, it was just one one person. So you just have one POC then that you uh, you talk to over there, and that's yeah. the person that you know. Just one pipeline of information, pretty much. Correct. Okay. Um, now, and I actually I had kind of had a problem with that because you know things things I were just they didn't, didn't seem right. You know, at times. Okay, I won't say the person's name. Uh, um, I won't, uh, but you know, we were when we were talking yesterday. Um, you did say a name to me that uh, kind of stuck out to me, and from the Medford FBI area, is that the person that we're talking about? No. Okay. No, that that's a just a straight up FBI agent that I haven't spoken to, and since the Sugar Pine stuff, and that was not a that was not a pleasant meeting. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay. And that. And this this situation with the JTTF, uh, the terms here are much more pleasant, I'm guessing? Uh, they were. Um, they, again, it was my question every day, and why was I, why was I contacted? Why was I there? Um, you know, because it was like I was hung out to dry, basically, you know. Um, on Valentine's Day, and somebody, uh, I was driving up I-5, getting off the, uh, onto the highway from the rest area, had a tire blown out. Well, so I thought the AAA came, we got it lifted up, and we see a bullet lodged in the rim of the tire. Um, so I, you know, I have a problem with that. So you con, or I contacted uh, the contacted Joint Terrorism Task Force. I didn't hear a damn thing back. You know, and to me, that that's kind of crappy. You know, I mean, it's like I I just got shot at, and you're not going to return a phone call. Um, you know, I was left to hang out and drive. Basically, it was, you know, not a good place to be. And when you when and you say you the hardest con- part is, I do stand by. 
when you say you, know, you contacted the reasoning them, behind doing it. <laughs> when you say you contacted them, do you mean um, you, you contacted your point of contact? Uh, you know, when that happened to you, as far as your your tire being shot at. Yes, I, I contacted him, and I also put in a call to Oregon State Police to just make a, a report on it. You know, to okay. let them know. Okay. You oh, so you actually filed a, an official report then? Yes. Okay. All right. Now. Yeah, I've got all that. The you know the record number, Oregon State Police record number of the case number, whatever it's called. Okay. Okay. Um, now we actually, I'd, I'd like for you to actually, uh, talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, you, we're not certain whether, uh, you were deliberately shot at or whether it was a, a random incident. So I want to be clear about that, but, um, right. as you stated, um, it, there hasn't been another shooting in the area like that. So there wasn't a pattern going on. So it would have been completely random. Um, uh, or either completely random or highly targeted. Um, right. So with that being said, um, you know, given your role and what you've done in, in, um, in the Oregon situation, because you have to understand, and, and, and I'm sure you do at this time that people have logic from both sides. So, uh, Absolutely. You know, and w- what I want to say is this. If you think about what you've done and how you, excuse me, going into the situation and uh, you haven't really dealt with the militia on the ground, you haven't really um, integrated with the leadership uh, uh, that was in place, uh, you know, before they were taken off to jail. Um, you haven't really done. So any haven't. Of... I've never met any of them. Uh, you know, I've never met Ammon or so, Ryan. So... Never talked to them. Okay, so that that's that's kind of where I'm going. Um, you know, <laughs> you're kind of not. You know, you you haven't integrated yourself up to the top levels yet. Um, you were on your way to doing that, but you didn't quite. You know, get get there yet. Now, with that well, being I was, said, I was never asked to either. Though I was never never asked to. Uh, you know, nothing was really mentioned about Ammon ever. Uh, actually, I don't think his, his name was ever brought up until after the actual, you know, takeover. Um, it was basically like, a, you know, or exactly like I said, it was just if you hear anything about violence, uh, or, you know, if they well, plan on violence, that's what that's what they wanted to know. And well, when I, I did when at I, one point, when but, I listened to you on Revolution Radio, I, you know, you, that's not actually what you said then. And I'm just, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, that's not actually Well, I'm going you're... through the, my point of contact through the Joint uh, Terrorism Task Force. Later that... on, um, I had another opportunity to try to bring a peaceful resolution to it. Okay. And that was through um, the Senator's office and then the Governor's office. So, well, or Congress, I guess, Congressman and Governor, sorry. I guess what I'm saying then is um, when you were going through your point of contact with the JTTF, and you, you integrated yourself in a situation because they wanted to know what was going on. Um, they, well, they contacted your dad to contact you to say, to kind of see, you know, Hey, what's going on? Just, you know, kind of eyes and ears on the ground kind of thing. Um, I remember in your revolution radio, uh, comment, uh, you saying that you were trying to get a message to Ammon, but you were blocked, uh, by the Patriots that were on the ground. Um, and but that was kind of a thing that you didn't want to get into talking about during that interview on Revolution Radio. Now, uh, that, well, no, so, it's not that I didn't want to get into it. That was uh, I was asked, you know, let's not focus on that. It's the wrong timing. OK, okay. Uh, we'll do a second interview and you can clear your name, do all this. And, you know, and, you know, I see stuff online that oh, it was a hanging interview. You did, know, did you ever get up. a second interview? The second interview never happened. No, you know, they were posting online in the comments section, you know, uh, it's, this was, a, I think they were actually replying to you about it. You know, this was a hanging interview, um, which, you know, I just made the reply. Well, yeah, I guess it was, but you know, who hung who basically, I, you know, I, I don't get it. You know, I was referred right. to as, you know, the guy on the other side. Well, I'm not on any other side. You know, it was, I tried doing the right thing. Okay, okay, um, and, and, I, and I can, you know, I, I'm going to be very fair, I'm going to be very fair, I can actually, 
I, I, I kind of see where you're at. Like I said, I'm trying to place myself in your shoes and, and look at uh, the world through your eyes. So I kind of see where you're at. And I'm going to tell you where I'm at in a second. Now, okay. my, my thing is, um, what what was the message that you were trying to get to Ammon that you were talking about in uh, Revolution Radio? And but today you're kind of saying that you you weren't trying to get next to, you know, those uh, particular individuals. But I'm kind of just curious well, now, like what was what would have been the message that you were talking about uh, as far as trying to well, get close to them and, and deliver some kind of a message? Well, again, it's um, it's, it's not really like you're making it out to be or um, portraying, it, portraying it wrong. It's not like that. It was, it's almost two separate inc- incidences. Okay. There was at the beginning when Joint Terrorism Task Force, when I went out there for that, that was during the very first rally when it was just going to be, you know, about the uh, the Hammonds, which everyone seems to forget. Um, you know, this this is what this was all about, was the Hammonds. Okay. Um, but anyways, there was that incident, uh, incidents when I was out there. I already left. I was out there, oh, about a week. And I had gone back to Salem, Oregon. And towards the end, we had a... I believe it was three days, or it was either 48 or 72 hours before uh, the ambush. And yeah, I'm choosing my words properly, in my opinion. Okay. Um, no, that's, was, that, that's a good uh, set of I words. Had, I'm given the opportunity, basically, to try to make a, you know, have a peaceful resolution to this, yeah. and that's what I wanted to try to speak with Ammon about. Oh, okay, okay. So and again, so you you were ahead. trying to you, like the meeting with him would have just been pretty much on the lines of um just to be honest with you pretty much on the lines of what the militia was already doing when they had uh uh, uh created the buffer zone between the FBI and the the occupiers to say that we're going to be the buffer of the point of contact for any kind of conversation to create a peaceful resolution your your goal though in in doing it was a little bit different in saying well I'm going to you know speak with them directly and just say hey Let's create a peaceful resolution this way in case any, I guess anybody around him wasn't offering that. Uh, not, not exactly. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody in the uh, PPN or Oath Keepers, Three Percenters, whatever, any patriots that was there. I don't know how many of them were talking to any of the senators or, uh, you know, anybody were, in the government about were it. Were you trying to talk to them? I was trying them? to offer a way to get out peacefully without everybody going to jail or anyone getting shot. Were you trying to talk to the uh, to the PPN and to to the three percenters that were on the ground? I did speak to them. I have uh, again uh, all Facebook messages uh, through several of them. I was met with uh, "You're a liar." "You're get out of here." You know, uh, just and then a bunch of threats, which they always resort to. You know, why, why didn't why didn't you meet up with any of them on the ground while you were there? Well, I wasn't there at the end. I, again, it was literally a week. When it first started, that's when I was there. I was there for a week, and I was only in Burns for three days. Okay. Uh, the rest of the time without Madras and Bend. Okay. okay. Uh, so there was no need to meet with any of them there. Um, you know, sim- simply no need. I mean, to be honest with you, if I hadn't met with any of them there, it probably wouldn't have gone too well. Um, There's still, you know, some bad blood over the sugar pine stuff. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. but, and so, so when, are you are you okay with any patriot organizations at this point in time? Is like, is there any that you can name that uh, you know that are out there that you know actually can look and say, "Hey, uh, Kevin Proust, he's uh, he's a good guy. Um, he's uh, he's he, you know he's a stand up kind of guy, and we understand his story, where he's coming from." Um, will vouch for him. Is there any organizations out there that are like that right now that? Well, I've never had any involvement like with the Patriot groups. I mean, to be honest with you, when they showed up the Sugar Pine, I didn't know who the hell the Oath Keepers were until somebody said the Bundy Ranch. And I said, oh, okay, the people from TV. I had no idea. You know, I had my own life. I was out mining in the woods. You know, we don't have TV out there. Um, you, so this was never, kind of my first deal. You've never them, tried you know? to become an Oath Keeper or a 3%er yourself? I never became one, no. Have you ever tried to become one? God, no. Okay. All right. No, and I only say God, no, because of the way, you know, 
shortly after learning who they were and being involved with them, the wanted poster and, you know, the false accusa- accusations came out. Um, but again, as a whole, I mean, the Oath Keepers as a whole or Three Percenters as a whole, I've got no problem with them. Um, it's just a small group of individuals that, okay. you know, to me, they now, need to be exposed. Now, the the small group of individuals, of course, um, everyone always says that, you know, about every organization, about every whatever's out there, because it is true. There's always, you know, uh, one, one or two bad apples in a bunch of anything that you're talking about. Now, as far I, as, um, as far as that is concerned, you're, would you agree with this? Okay. If, if now I, I've tried placing myself in your shoes. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, is to step out of your shoes for a second and place yourself in other folks' shoes, okay? Now, yep. now, just roll with me for a second. If, if um, okay. If if I'm at the rally, okay, and I'm there, I'm an activist, and I'm standing um, with the people who are saying the Hammonds should not have been uh, jailed twice. We're tired of the BLM overreaching and taking our land. We're tired of being harassed by the federal government. Um, we're tired of uh, uh, the government usurping all the resources right from under us. Um, if, if I'm if I'm the activist that's standing on that side and and I'm rallying and I'm and I'm standing there for a righteous constitutional just cause, and then there's a guy that's standing maybe about five car lengths down. And he's recording on a cell phone or taking pictures and he's kind of a loner. He's not there with with anybody. He's not really affiliating with anybody. He's not connecting with anyone, but he's just there to observe and to not really uh, not to stand with the activists, not to stand with the patriots, but just there. OK, so just keep walking with me. And then I hear that person later on, I'm that same activist, and I hear that person later on on the radio. And that person later on on the radio was saying, well, I was contacted by people who work with the JTTF um, and, and, you know, and actually in that interview, you said that you work with the JTTF, Um, but I was contacted. I, I don't recall saying that, but and I don't work for him or with him, so. Well, I, I, I did know it was a mistake. I think I think, you know? it, I think it was just the context that you were saying it in. I, I will be fair yeah. in that aspect. I think it was the context that you were saying it in. So, it, it, but in your your particular position, you have to be careful with the way you say things. But let, let's just take it no, further, though. So, if, if I'm that same activist and now I'm hearing you on the radio and you're saying. Well, I was contacted by the JTTF uh, and they were asking questions about the the people who were involved, the activists, and I'm that activist. And and so I went to that event and I gave these people who work with the federal government information about their activities. Now, as a person who's standing up for constitutional uh, just rights, godly rights, God-given rights, and they're there and they're saying, government, we are tired tired of you infringing upon our God-given rights. You're not there for the same reason that they're necessarily there for, and they look at you as working with the people who are holding them, um, holding them down, the people who are creating their grievances. How do you look at that person, that activist who may also be a rancher, and say that you're on that person's team and that you are not an informant when your only point of contact and only reason for being there has federal ties. Well, it's, again, I mean, it is hard to put myself in someone else's shoes in that because I would like to think if I was in someone else's shoes that I would have tried to hear both sides first before passing judgment. But, I mean, especially since... Well, the if, activist if you're, side if, if with the Hammond stuff, yes. I mean, I'm I'm with you on that stuff. Yeah. The, you know, the government is overreaching, okay. uh, the land grabs. But on the other side of it, though, it always takes two. You have uh, certain groups, especially the Oath Keepers, and 
not going to say the 3% because it's not really them to my knowledge. But you have these groups that, you know, during the initial Bundy standoff, there were, uh, well, I believe it was Utah, Montana, and Colorado uh, ranchers that really had strong cases against the BLM. And they legitimately got screwed. To me, the Bundys didn't. And when organizations go to kind of the sham, you know, the media grabbing type standoff situations, I'm not okay with that. To me, that's fake, that's bullshit, and it's fraud. So you know, to, go, to go you, to help the people that really need it. So to you, then, if I could just interject right there for a brief second, if you don't mind. Um, it, to you, the Bundy situation that was an unnecessary situation? You felt like the federal government was right in that situation? I would say both sides are kind of wrong on that. I, I'm, what I'm saying is I don't think it was a fight that the Oath Keepers and Patriot Movement should have gotten involved with. And do you, uh, do you, you, know, and do you feel time, the same? At the same time, there were three other ranchers at the least that were getting screwed over that they had truly legitimate cases, you know, no controversy here or there. It was They got screwed by the BLM. Okay, so do you Um, feel the same uh, regarding this, the Oregon situation? Do you feel like uh, the players involved should have gotten involved? Do you think they maybe shouldn't have gotten involved at all? Like, where do you stand on that? I I think the Hammonds got screwed. I mean, it's double jeopardy. Um, They they did their time. That was it. You know, they're not terrorists. I I know nothing of the people. Uh, Just what I've read online, what I've heard, what I've seen. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, that to me, that's a legitimate one to get into. But then, you know, I may agree with Bundy's message. I do not agree with what he did. I mean, it was it was stupid from the get-go, and I believe most patriots would agree with that. Um, and most people in general, it was a very stupid thing to do. It wasn't a way to get a message across, and it that right there took away from the patriot movement, too. You know, so it's it doesn't look good, you know, as a whole for uh, PPN or 3% or Oath Keepers. Uh, however, yeah, absolutely, I think they should have been there. I wish more people went to the rally, and I wish everything was peaceful, you know. It was, it's a shame what happened. Okay. It, it is well, what it is. You know? I, I, I feel that, uh, I feel that you're being truthful in what you're saying uh, regarding that, as far as your feelings regarding uh do you know uh, how you feel about that? I, I really do. But I, I guess the only part I'm having a little bit of uh, trouble with is understanding, um, you know, is, is it kind of like a double-edged sword or is it kind of like, um, uh, you know, um, like, I don't know. Is, is it saying two things at the same time? Is it double speak when you say that maybe it shouldn't have happened and, and that you wish that it wouldn't have happened, but you wish more people would have showed up? Like... Yeah, I, you know, I wish that more people showed up to support the Hammonds, and that's it. Nobody broke off, nobody did anything, you know, and just got the message out there, you know. Okay. I, I believe there should be, uh, you know, more communication first before, you know, resorting to any talk of a civil war or any of that crap. Okay. Now, let me ask you this, you know, just kind of going back just a little bit. Um, why... Why does the, the JTTF know your father? You know, without saying your father's name and, you know, putting him in an uncomfortable position, we're not here to do that. But um, why does the JTTF know your father? And why did they feel comfortable going to your father to ask for your help uh, to, you know, pretty much look for your resources um, through your parents? I mean, that's that's a that's a pretty, you know, that's pretty tough. <laughs> They had only uh, they met my parents once. We had a meeting with them, uh, and from you know from the outside, my my parents didn't understand what was going on. You know, what do you mean there's a wanted poster out for you? You know, it's not the 1800s. You know, it's uh, what are you talking about? And I explained it to them obviously, and uh, I said, well, you know, I have to sit down with this guy up in the Portland office. Come along, and they went along. We sat down. Uh, and that one ended up in an argument, too. I walked out, and that's the only time that they've met the man. Uh, you know, my father did contact him afterwards to say, you know, what what the hell is that all about? You know, you're meeting about this uh, sugar pine stuff, and it was over um, the morning poster, Joseph Rice. 
Now, the JTTF agent had asked me, he said, well, all right, he said, what's, uh, what's Joseph Rice's phone number? Let me give him a call and see if we can get this resolved. And uh, the miners also had $4,000 and still have um, $4,000 of my mining equipment. So he wanted to call and see if this could be settled, resolved. And he left the room. Um, 10, 15 minutes later, he came back in the room. And he was actually yelling at me, saying, now he knows who I am. You know, you because of you, this guy knows who I am, my name. And I said, are, are you on drugs? I said, you just asked for his phone number and called him. You know, and so it was like uh, kind of a head scratcher, you know. I'm like, well, you're yelling at me when you asked me for the man's phone number. Went out in the hallway, called him, and, you know, <laughs> it, it made no sense. It, it was ridiculous. Okay, so, all right, so now we, we kind of have a basis of how your father gets interjected in, in, into this whole situation, so it's not just a question mark of, you know, how did that happen? Um, I, you know, because people will speculate and they'll say, oh, well, you know, it, Kevin's dad is an agent, you know, so. Yeah, no, it, he's not. It's good that, you know, we, we talk about it uh, now and that I ask you the questions now. Like I said, I'm not trying to put your father out there or anything or, you know, make this personalized. But uh, thank you for answering that. Um, with that being said, uh, you know, within your uh, your uh, Revolution Radio interview, you also stated that um, that you do contract work for the federal government. Now. Out of the, all the contract work that you do for the federal government, would this be included in any of that kind of work uh, that you do uh, as far as, uh, you know, them feeling comfortable with asking you to monitor situations? Oh, God, no. No, it had nothing to do with that. No. Um, and it's not anything that I do is not uh, an ongoing thing. It's not, you know, once in a while I've gotten involved for uh, various cybersecurity type stuff, and that's it. Uh, it has nothing to do with this. Once in a, I'm sorry, uh, you were breaking up when you said that. Once in a while you have what now? Once in a while I've been called uh, to do some cybersecurity type stuff. Nothing major, nothing, you know, uh, nothing was related to this. And I have no ongoing work with them. It's, you know... Cy cyber security type stuff are you, uh so it, essentially what you're saying is uh as a contractor then as a contractor for the government then like like uh like almost like a dod contractor no it, it was strictly through military i mean not not oh, okay. dod directly it was basically just setting up stuff it was nothing work really nothing okay earth shattering okay okay i i, I have i i think i understand you so when I worked in the military, um, we did work with, uh, you know, several outside contractors and vendors and uh, on very, you know, with various capacities um, and on a lot of different projects. So at the end of the day, I, I, I kind of understand where where you're going with that. So that level of work, your IT work that you do for uh, various projects to the government have nothing really to do with. Uh, what what the JTTF was asking you to do in the Oregon situation? Correct. Nothing at all. Okay. So are you saying that uh, out of this whole situation, and from what I'm gathering so far here, um, are you saying that uh, you never initially contacted the JTTF yourself? No, never. Okay. Okay. Um. Now, with that being said, uh, if you're, okay, I kind of want to just, you know, because I, I, don't, I, I guess I'm not feeling satisfied about just this one part, um, because I, I don't think that you understood me, and, and I'm not going to go over the whole thing again, but I'll just say this. I asked you to step out of your shoes for a second. And a step into I, I, I do. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did get off track. I did understand it, and I I do understand, you know, how people would feel, look at it, and think. I do get that. Um, okay. But again, you know, it, it is hard to put myself in that position because I would like to think that I would, you know, try to see both sides uh, and all sides before passing judgment. You know, and yeah, I'm guilty of not doing that all the time. You know, myself as everybody is, it's human nature. But 
I do get how people would look at it. Uh, I, you know, I do understand that. And again, that's why I wanted to kind of hopefully clarify things. You know, it was, you know, I was trying to prevent a war, prevent anything, any violence. Because let's face it, people would die on both sides. You know, it wasn't helping one side or the other. It was something that I don't, I don't agree. Uh, anything needed to escalate to any type of violence. I mean, it was, it was, I was almost, I guess, trying to help both, both sides, if that makes sense, or, you know, just humanity as a whole, almost. I don't know how to word it, you know, to be honest with you. It was, I didn't think uh, any, any escalation to violence was a good thing, and it should have been avoided at all costs. Mm-hmm. And you know, I absolutely agree with you uh, uh, on that. Um, the, the the thing, I guess, I you know, and and I'm glad that you addressed it a little bit more. But the the thing that I'm still just one little hair that that um, you know, that's off, and I'll I'll put it like this. Um, you would have wanted to see yourself uh, think of the situation openly if you were in those other shoes. That's why it's hard for you to place yourself there because, you know, you don't see how those people could just see one side. I get it. Um, that's that's where I think that you have the disconnect with the with the community of what's going on. And that's where I believe that you have the most vulnerability in this whole situation. Now, when I say this, when I say vulnerability, I'm not saying vulnerability from the aspect of uh, you are uh, necessarily just a a lone victim and woe is me, everything has happened to you. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, Some of these things could have obviously been avoidable and uh, you, you didn't do your job in avoiding those. So consequences come with with that you know with actions but you live and you learn so it's not really necessarily to take anything away from you um well and i wouldn't call it you know again i wouldn't call it a job it was no job i i was doing what i thought was right and yeah. you know i guess maybe where the disconnect is i'd have to go back to the sugar pine on that uh because another conversation that had taken place the, well, the same well, day on. about you know well, more donations than make more money with donations than we would do mm-hmm. gold. The statement was also made uh, between Kirby and George Backus about burning the cabin there down to blame the BLM. Now, you know that again, that was something that was like, oh my God, you know, this is I've got, I've heard for so long now about Kirby saying you know complaining about the BLM and spreading the word that just burning down cabins, and then to hear out of their mouth that they wanted to burn down that cabin and blame the BLM, that kind of puts things into check for, you know, for a person where you have to just kind of step back and question what else is a lie? You know, what is true? What's, what's not true. I, I understand. I, I understand that. I do understand it. And I, I, I definitely get that about the, you know, the, the Kirby situation. I, you know, it, it that situation uh, was, of course, unfortunate, but where I guess, um, you know, um, I guess where, where I'm at though, and, and what I'm kind of, you know, saying, if I just kind of want to go back to that, you know, just for a second, um, to me, and I think to other people where the disconnect truly lies in, and when I hear other people talk and other people that I've interviewed and when I listen to the, the jargon that's within the Patriot community and, uh, when I listen to the knowledge and the, you know, uh, some of the people that I, I talk to out there, um, I'm give a shout out to a, a guy named Jerry, who we had an awesome conversation a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, it, I, I hear, I hear this kind of talk in this kind of language where people talk about things like uh, a constitutional republic. Um, they talk about common law. They, uh, you know, folks like myself talk about um, godly constitutional rights, meaning your unalienable rights. Um, when when we hear you speak and when we hear you talk about what you do, I guess I, I, I'm giving you my a part of my conclusion and also what I believe other people conclude. Um, there is there's this major disconnect that happens because 
everyone else is speaking this way that is within the community. Maybe they, you know, they have different levels of knowledge in certain areas, but they're speaking in a general way. But then when they hear you speak, it, it never has to do with the way that they are necessarily speaking. Um, but it's like you're in their community, you're not speaking their language, and you're literally telling them that I'm giving the information back to these people because they're requesting the information about you. It, it, to me, you know, you, you, you have to understand. You, you literally have I to. I absolutely do. Okay, so, and, and that's what I mean by when you have to step into somebody else's shoes because all these people in the Patriot community, you know, they, uh, let's just be real. And I'm, I'm not, you know, here to uh, paint a pretty, uh, a perfect picture of flowers for the Patriot community. There's a lot of, uh, you know, messed up individuals in that community. There's a lot of screwed up crap that happens within that community. That is just the fact, <laughs> right. the fact of the matter. Now, there is a lot of good stuff that happens as well. I just wish they, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be so self-righteous about the community. There's a lot of flaws. So let, let's just be honest. Right. Like every organization has their flaws. Um, Absolutely. Uh, within that concept and, you know, within all of that stuff and knowing that, you know, what I just said, you know, why don't you talk about things like the Constitutional Republic? Why don't you talk about things dealing with common law? Why don't you talk about things that uh, bring resolution to the people that have the grievances? Why are you, why does it seem like you were more inclined to work with the government than the actual people? Why aren't you one of the people that reaches out to the people and works on their behalf instead of working on behalf of the government? What is the reason for that well, in your mindset? Let me be clear. Let me be clear. Well, when I say work for, let me be very clear. I'm not trying to set you up for anything by saying work for. I, I know. Okay. I just want to be clear about that. Okay. You know, here's the thing. I mean, the the people that I've dealt with and around that I'm, I'm talking about on the, the Patriot community, you know, it's just I, I cannot get past that handful that, you know, wanted violence, wanted, you know, weren't exactly who they portrayed to be. Um, so that, you know, I, I met a lot of their followers, um, those type of Patriots, which to me, you know, I call them the fake Patriots. But um, it was so much, you know, that I, I don't agree with. Um, going straight to violence or doing, you know, uh, setting BLM uh, up, you know, they set themselves up enough, you know, they don't need the help of people, you know, burning down their own cabins. I, so I it's hear, some, you know, that aspect, you, but it's, do you um, see these I'm, things, ha do, you, on, no. do you see these things happening with your own eyes though? I mean, do you like see them being violent or burning things down? I heard it right out of their mouth. I mean, you know, it was, they wanted to do that. That was one of their plans. That's, you know, to me, it was the, when I got the minors at record and George flipped out, they didn't want that because that, you know, ultimately was one thing that won them their case or their stay. You know, it's not a permanent decision yet. And, you know, it was just when that, when you think you're doing good and you're helping, you know, the mining community and everybody turns around and spits in your face because they want to listen to one man that can't even use his real name, you know, against the person that, yeah, there's some bad stuff out there written online about me. I'm not a criminal, though. I have never been sued, um, you know, and again, the opposition has a list of charges, uh, fraud, uh, you know, all, all sorts of bad stuff. Well, you know, in my eyes, you know, yeah, here are both sides, but at least for me, I would lean more towards the person that's never been in trouble, you know, that's never been sued, you know, and you, you say you never... say, oh, that just proves you're an informant or something. No, it doesn't. You know, I'd be sued at least. You well, know, you've and, been in, you've, uh, you 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 have been in trouble, but it's not um, as you state before. Uh, if you find anything about me online, it's because uh, I've pissed off a couple of girlfriends or something like that. Were you not in a situation before um, uh, dealing with something like that? I, I was. I was. Uh, well, for instance, there was a woman by the name of Lisa. I don't know her last name. I had read a script for. I used to do some screenplay writing. Okay. You know, nothing major. It was just one of those things. A phase of my life, I guess. Um, and, and it sucked what she had written. 
And I told her that I, you know, was open, honest, blunt, you know, um, originally from New York. So sometimes that backfires in my face, you know, the being blunt part. Yeah. And it was just awful what I read. And I told her that. And she, in turn, came up with this crap about uh, what, what, what part of $760 or whatever. Well, hold on, let me finish. Because one thing that I can show was the day that that supposedly happened would have been very, very difficult for me to do that because I was literally under the knife at Swedish Medical Center having back surgery. Oh. So it's things like that when people don't hear my side, you know. I mean, if if I if I did that when I was under the knife, then my God, no, you know, no, I, 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 pretty amazing trick. So she, so she was, you know, uh, requ- requesting money while you were in surgery. Is that what you're saying? That's when she said that she had sent me, I believe, online it said seven hundred and sixty dollars or something. I don't know what it was, how much. I don't. But uh, did, did you I, receive like I said, that? Money? I was under the knife at Swedish Medical Center. Huh? Did you ever receive that or no? No, I, I was having surgery. She had said uh, online, I'm just going by her post, because that's all there is, Okay. Um, that, you know, I supposedly had done this. And I said, well, that's funny, you know, because I was having back surgery. I I contacted ripoffreport.com, and I was told that even the author of a post cannot remove a post. Uh, oh. I could, at the time, I believe it was, it was either 10000 or $15,000 if I wanted to pay that they would have like some sort of mediation process and they would verbally clear it up, but it would still remain online. You know, it's not exactly fair. Uh, no, I, 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 you know, I so do, anybody can go on to, I do tell people that ripoffreport.com is, is a ripoff in itself because anybody could go online and file any kind of egregious complaint they want. You can go in there right now and file a complaint against Barack Obama. So, <laughs> You think we can go online right now and write one about them? I mean, they don't remove them no matter what. Yeah, yeah well, that's what I'm telling people. That, yeah. That's literally what – it's not going to matter. But, yeah, you can go no. online and, and write uh, complaints against your senators, your governors, um, you know, everybody that's around you. Whether those complaints are verified as being 100% true or not is, is you know, that's that's not – no, they're not because it's not a court case. It's not, you know, uh, court cases going on ripoff report. So I try to tell people that all the time because you see something on ripoff report doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting all the factual information. So I, I, I prefer not to, you know, go to ripoff report to find factual information. What I guess I'm asking, you know, is this has any of uh, any of those past dealings uh, you know, ever dealt and you go into court with any of those individuals? Or, and, you know, it, if so, was it resolved rather quickly? I don't know. Like I said, I've never been sued, never been taken or never anything because, well, again, it's not true. Why would they? Okay. You know, I mean, if, uh, if, if I'm going around screwing these people over as much as they all say I am, then why haven't they sued me? Why, you know, why hasn't a, a police officer ever knocked on my door, or called me up or anything? Because it never happened. Uh, you know, that's why. I will say there is one person that wrote on there. Her name is April. Now, she did invest money in an old company that I had. Uh, company went belly up. We lost money across the board, her included. Uh, did I rip her off or screw her over? No. She lost money like I did. My family, you know, that was, you know, investments like gambling. Um, and, in fact, when she made the investment, uh, it was either 4000 or $5,000, she had asked uh, if I needed more. I said, no, it's, we just needed whatever it was. This is what it's going to cost, and that's what we, uh, you know, if I was out to screw her over, I would have said, yeah, absolutely, you know, keep it coming. That wasn't the case. Now, her, I mean, she lost money, so I could see her being mad. Absolutely. You know, I'm mad, too. I lost, Like I said, I lost money. Okay. Um, moving forward, so, do, you think, um, do you think moving forward, how do you think you're going to respond um like, okay, let's just say an incident pops up tomorrow, uh, and, and there's a couple of them that are brewing on the horizon right now, um, and, and the JTTF calls up Kevin, and they say, Mr. Proust, we need you to check out a situation over here um, on the other side of Oregon, and, um, you know, just kind of keep an eye on it and let us know what's going on. What would be your response to the JTTF in that situation? Well, that, and I actually hope that any of them are listening because it would be a big hell no. You know, screw you. That's what it would be. Okay. 
Okay. You know, I just want to live my life, man. You know, I want to get back to gold mining, which, you know, I can't really do in Oregon um, as, you know, that's one thing that should be being looked at and, you so know, we'll, we need to fight about is getting mining back in, you know, Oregon. If we have that moratorium, five-year ban on motorized equipment, you know. Um, okay, so let me let me ask you this because you're a very interesting individual and I, I think that people that are listening to this are thinking the same thing. They're trying to kind of, you know, you're one of those people where you could talk to you for hours and still not figure out your stance. And that, that's a very interesting uh, capability to have as a human being. And, and the, right. reason why, the reason why I'm saying that is this, because I'm going to ask you a, a very, you know, di- direct set of questions or, or a direct question, a couple of them. Um, and, okay. and, and, and it's just to clarify where you stand now and in the future. Now, oh, man, right? that, that... <laughs> I know it's it, it, look, I, I'm not going to bust you in the head, but you know, we need to know the truth. No, it, it's not that it's not that at all. It's, um, you know, you just mentioned, you said it's an interesting capability to have where it's not so much as a capability. It's just flat out being a confused person. You know, it's, you know, like I said, a lot of things, you know, and a lot of people that I, you know, that I had opinions of turned out to be different. And, you know, it's both sides, kind of. Well, maybe just, you, maybe you, know, you can clarify what that. Who then. do you listen to? Who do you believe? You know, what it, what's right? It's, it's maybe, insane. Maybe it's like you, an extreme on one end and an extreme on the other end. Well, that's and what I'm saying. That's me, what I'm we saying. We should be meeting in the middle, you know? That's what I'm saying, though. It's I don't think it's necessarily with other people. Other people have already selected their positions. Okay, and that's what I was right. signifying earlier with the case of, you know, if you take yourself out of Kevin's shoes and put yourself, Kevin places himself into that that rancher activist or that that person that's on the front line, okay? And, and if Kevin places himself in that position, Kevin's a completely different person than who Kevin is right now. And that's what I'm saying because I, in my opinion, I see somebody that, you know... There's really no reason because you're not giving me a reason um, and I haven't found one yet. What would be your reason for even being on the scene at any of these ranching events? Because it doesn't really sound like it it, to me. and, 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 you know, excuse me for this. I'm not trying to be rude or anything like that or put you on the spot, but it doesn't sound to me like you resonate with what their problems are. Now, and and when I say that, I I say that in a way that of not, like I said, not being rude, but you don't resonate with what their problems are because one, it's not why you're there. You're not there to defend them. And and that's very clear. Um, Two, it it seems to me like, um, you you know, uh, even with you wanting to, at one point in time, maybe not so much now, but at one point in time, maybe, you know, uh, being around the affiliation of the situations that were going on from Sugar Pine, maybe wanting to be involved with those communities and liking those communities like the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters. um, It just seems to me like you wanted a stake in that in like one of the groups or the organizations, maybe at one point in time, and there was a lot of friction going on there, but you never really had a stake in what the people that are on the ground are really fighting for. So what is very confusing to me, and I guess what I want to know is, where do you exactly stand when it comes to issues um, regarding the Constitution uh, the federal government uh, overreaching in the Constitution, whose side do you stand on? Because it, for a lot of people, that's why I'm saying it's not other people. They understand where they stand regarding their constitutional freedoms and liberties. And and I want to kind of under, understand where you stand at. And if you do stand with those people, why do you think that it's okay to work with the federal government um, and necess- you know what the go- federal government's mission is in, in kind of destroying what their purpose is in planning. So where do you stand on that? Well, you know, it, it, is, a, it is a tough one, um, honestly. It's um, with the, like going back initially with the Hammonds. I stood for them. I would stand for them. But it always has to be taken that one step too far where it's I don't stand for that. So it's that's why it's hard for me to answer now. I'll say why I was there. A big part of it was was because of what happened to me at the Sugar Pine, because a lot of the same players were there that you know did wrong me, 
Um, you know, so it was personal on that level, and I wanted to expose them and clear my name. And I don't want to see other people have to go through what I've gone through. You know, having a, a wanted poster out there for nine months, um, you know, and it was literally when I was told by Joseph Rice, the wanted poster's down. Well, it was the day or two later your video came out, and I was like, holy shit. You know, I, it's, I haven't gotten a break from this, you know, and, you know, people say, oh, you're just being paranoid. How am I being paranoid? You know, there was a wanted poster out to me. I mean, this man was literally in Salem passing out wanted posters to people. You know, every kind of dirtbag in town, you know, and not just dirtbags, but anybody that would need money. But a lot of the, you know, uh, shady characters, we'll leave it at that. Um, you know, so how am I ever supposed to put my guard down when that was going on? And then, you know, the video would come out, and again, well, now you're labeled an informant. How do you put your guard down? So... It's well, okay. You know, well, and, and I, and everything I, for like almost the past year has just been a. It sucks, man. It sucks. I under I I do understand that, but I am I'm I'm not going to lie to you, Kevin. I am having the hardest time. I am just having the hardest time. I guess placing myself in your shoes and saying to myself, um. And that's the and, thing, and, man. Well, I, I understand that, and I'm confused. This what I'm this, you know on, on different things. It's so this is what I'm saying though. It, you know, it, eventually after this much time has passed, you know, a, a man makes a decision and he says what side he's gonna go on. And you know, it, and, and either way, you know, I, I I'll just be the first to say this. It's okay. It, you know, if you decided that you wanted to go work for the government, fine. That's your decision to go work for the government. You're a human being, and maybe that's what you want to do. If it did, if you decide, okay. I just want to go out in the woods, and mine gold, and be left alone, man. That's okay. what I want. Okay. I want my, my mining equipment back. I want to go out in the woods. I want to mine gold. That's okay. what I want. So, so, <clears throat> so, with that being said, uh, that that kind of leads into where I'm going with my question. And thank you. Now, how does Kevin want to be known as? I mean, because you know, I, I'm getting blown up with messages right now about you. Yeah, I'm um, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, okay. Wow. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll continue with what I was saying. Uh, you know, how, how do you want to be, um, you know, uh, after all of this has played out, all the information that's out there on Google, um, after everything that you've said, I mean, because these things you've said with your own mouth, you know, you have to understand that mm -hmm. Kevin, it, it, it's a different situation if people are going around, um, you know, like if in my video, I just speak for myself. I don't, I don't know about the other characters, but if if I'm just speaking for myself, it's a different situation. If I'm going around and I'm just making stuff up about you, I'm not making anything up about you. I'm not only am I going by a, a, just a wealth of information that's online about you, and you, you know, you build a character profile over time. In the last ten years or so of your life it's pretty easy to build a character profile for, for you uh, and maybe a little bit less than that, but it's, it's, it's pretty easy to build a, a character profile for you because, you know, the situations aren't connected like your screenwriting um, and then your, your business and then your uh, uh, JTTF Dylan's and sugar pine and and then, well, not really so much in Sugar Pine, but the situation you had happen at Sugar Pine. And then your JTTF dealings in um, uh, in Oregon, like it's this it's this range of extraordinary events that keep happening that you get you keep getting placed on the wrong side of history. And yeah, and that's yeah, kind of pretty lucky guy, huh? Yeah, it's it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of concerning. Dude, it because sucks, man. It sucks. It, it's kind of concerning. It's not because, it, it, you know, I'm not saying that, and, and at this point in time, just from listening to you, just from talking to you, you know, you willingly come on air. As soon as the, I put out that video, you, you contacted me, I think maybe a couple days later or something like that. And, uh, and, and we had dialogue through the email and, and um, you know, it was respectful dialogue on top of that. Um, so I, I, I wanted to get your side of the story honest, you know, uh, obviously, but at the same time, um, you know, in getting your side, I, I would be wrong for saying that I'm not sitting here also analyzing you just like everybody else that's listening. 
And in the analyzation, yeah, in the analyzation that I have of you, I'm seeing that, you know, and I'm just going to be honest with you. You know, you may be a, a, one of those kind of uh, what I would say. I, I grew up with a, a best friend. Shout out to one of my uh, best friends out there. His name is Chris. Um, uh, or, you know, we were best friends when we were younger. But very um, disconnected with social life. Um, didn't really get, you know, maybe didn't have a lot of friends when they were, when they were younger. Um, very intellectual with, uh, and savvy with computers. Um, but not, not so much with people, but cares about issues, but, but has other barriers in the way. Now I'm not trying to read you like a book, but what I'm trying to say to you is you're a very interesting kind of person because, um, you don't have, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the capacity for understanding, um, that you would uh, 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 others pe- other people's issues that you would wish to have, and and I think that yeah. kind of shines through when you have your when you try to have good intentions, but then on the social side of your life, it fails miserably, and you keep repeatedly ending up in the wrong side, you know, the wrong side of the the fence in every situation that you go into, and. You know, do you do you agree with that analysis? Well, is that a fair analysis, or what do you think about that? No, that's um, not not right at all. I mean, in fact, I was actually uh, one of the star athletes in a lot of the sports in my high school. A lot of friends, very popular, got scouted uh, and a written letter from uh, oh, I don't remember his name now, but he was the head scout when you back at high school. I was a junior. Um, so you're this, this was back in, back in this, New York. Um, hold on. What's that? Back in New York. This was actually back in New Hampshire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of wrong on that one. It's, but you know, I can understand why you think that or feel that way. It's, uh, because they have taken the line. That's not very popular. You know I mean? I okay. call bullshit on any side, you know, when I see it. And, you know, I'm far from perfect. I've had my screw ups and mm-hmm. I've never gone through anything like this. You know, it's, uh, okay. To me, it's just things, things are crazy, you know, and I think it, it just proves that the world around us is just losing control. You know, it's, there's a lot of weird things happening in a lot of areas. All right. Well, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to give you, um, you know, just, just one, one jewel of mine. And, and this is a, a sound bite that you can, you know, keep, I guess you could say. <clears throat> I don't think that you are a traditional informant. And and I'm, I'm going to state why. And, and this is something I know maybe some of the listeners out there are like, oh, did you hear everything that this man just said? And I'm going to say, yes, I did hear everything he just said. Now, do I think you're an informant still? Absolutely. A traditional informant, no. But I, I, there's something that's happening in this new age, and I think that a lot of people don't understand. And I'm going to explain it, you know, before we open up the line real quick here. Um, and and this is it's a really easy thing to explain. What the government has managed to do, especially over the course of the last two decades, is they've built a coalition of um, of corporations and organizations now uh, to tie in with government. Now, this infrastructure is not by accident. This is very much by design. This is the new world order design. Now, within that design, okay, you're going to have your corporations at the top. You're going to have your government uh, directly under your corporations. And you're going to have your organizations actually uh, with or below your government, okay, In, in a lot of situations because they work with the government very closely, actually more than the corporations do. Now, with that being said, when you talk about organizations and, and, and things like that, uh, JTTF could be uh, labeled one of those organizations that works in cooperation with the government and with the you know elite that are within the corporate or banking infrastructure, whatever. Okay. With that being said, JTTF's mission is to integrate within community uh, communities across the, the nation, integrate within societies across the nation. And to develop a list of contacts um, and, and, and uh, informants, if you will, people that uh, they can talk to in confidence, 
um, uh, about issue uh, situations that they can deliver information to, and that information won't be compromised. Now, they may never use the term with you as informant. They may never even say that term around you once. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'd be very doubtful that, uh, that they would even chance to use it. But everything that all the actions surrounding what their mission is as far as integrating with society and, and actually talking to the people and uh, quote unquote networking and building this network of personal contacts for each agent, this is the infrastructure that we are all fighting against. And, and in that broad aspect of things, when, when you have a group of people that understand, you know, you, you say that you're confused. So I'm going to tell you from the people that understand what they're doing, they're fighting an infrastructure that is set up, that is inclusive, and, and, and that it is uh, taking the liberties and the values of another group of people. Now, some of that I know you oh, understand. No, no, I understand all that. I'm not confused about that. Okay. Uh, what I'm confused about is exactly who's who, because... Well, we're going to take Kirby Jackson, for example. The last thing, last message well, well, he ever listen, sent listen. me, let me, let me was say about this. how his family is, the Munsells, the Squires, and the Pratts, uh, pre-Bilderberg group. He went into the whole thing, and I took that as a threat, you know. And, yeah. again, when you get messages like that, it's, wow, who the hell is who? And, you know, I'm, well, I'm with you, man. That's, and I can understand. You know, that, that is you know what, what they do. That's I, what they're good at. I it's, can actually understand what you're saying about that, because you know, people use that kind of... Uh, uh, I guess, what do you call it? Intimidation. They use the intimidation tactics to try to silence you out or, you know, things like that or, or whatever. But I, I think that, um, you know, I think that your level of confusion has, um, has maybe hindered you a lot, man. It really has hindered you a lot. And I think um, your inability to get out the information, I thank you for coming on my show and saying that you're going to put this information out overnight so that it could be in the video on my YouTube channel by the morning time. Um, it, you know, it, that's going to be groundbreaking for you. And I'm sure people are going to be looking forward to that. My thing is, you're a very intellectual uh, uh, man as far as, you know, uh, knowing certain things that you know in life and as far as your ambition, certainly. Um, why haven't you ever put this information out yourself before as far as going to other people and trying to talk to other people? Why didn't you just open up a YouTube account, upload a video of yourself talking, and and show the documents that you're talking about? Well, again, I mean, it's when you have stuff like the wanted poster out and stuff that I've encountered and, and all of it. Yeah. You know, some of it could be a completely innocent situation. That was just a coincidence, but under the circumstances, it, you know, has to be taken other ways. And, you know, there's been some freak outs along the way. That's, you know, that's a certain and dealing with the group, you know, that has such a large following and large member base, you don't know who anybody is, you know, anybody you encounter. And, you know, that it did get to me a bit. Um, mm -hmm. so for that reason, it was kind of, you know, always on the move here, there, you know, cause it was no matter where I'd be day two would always, you know, turn out to be not so good. It was like, you know, we, we know where you are now and we're going to, we're going to harass you. I mean, anything from a, a physical attack to just a good old mind screwing, you know, and again, not all of it was related. Some was, you know obviously and definitely uh, just a coincidence, but couldn't be taken that way, you know, well, uh, under the circumstances. I think, and, you know, I, I honestly just, you know, I'm listening to you and I, I honestly, it, it's funny because I'm just being honest with you in, in a certain way. I feel for you. I do just to be honest with you in, in another way. I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of on the fence, I guess you could say, because I'm, I'm like, man, you know, this guy has really opened up a door of BS to himself and by involving himself in these situations where if all he really wants to do is go in the woods and, and mine, um, then why don't you just walk off into the sunlight and walk into the woods and mine? Why why be online posting Patriot comments all the time and, and uh posting, you know, or the, the comments that you post against, you know, Brandon Curtis on my videos and, and being so, so involved with, uh, you know, 
the aspects of everything that's going on, if you don't want that lifestyle and if you don't want to be portrayed a certain way, then it's really that's why I think it's hard for people to grasp who the truth of Kevin Proust really is, because you, you say one thing, but it's it, when you, we look at your actions, it doesn't always calculate up to be the same thing. And, and if I can say this, if I can say this, um, when you when you look at uh, again the the constitutional value of the things that are going on right now, and based on the fact that um, you know again you don't know what side to go with, why don't you just go with what the document says? Why don't you just go with what the Constitution says? Our, our Bill of Rights and 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 things like that. Our states' rights. Um, well. You know, I, I do personally. I, I do, and okay. but to me, a lot of what I'm seeing, and you know, definitely not the patriot community as a whole. Um, okay. But again, certain members they're using the Constitution to hide behind it. I mean, it would shock me if uh, a lot of the people that are preaching it have even read it or give a shit about it. I mean, honestly, and you know, for me, that's tough when it looks like someone who's just using it to hide behind. Mm. Um, you know, that's not what it's meant for either. Mm. You know, okay. it's not not meant to be a loophole. Okay, so so that's that's a very strong statement right there. All right, well, um, I'm just gonna guess that you know you know I, we're not here to really you know figure everything out tonight, but we're here just to kind of bring everything out in the open, give no. you the opportunity. Well, let me get to the first part of your your statement there, question or whatever. I mean, how you know, and ask you one. I mean, how would you suggest I go out and? get back to mining and do that. Again, my mining equipment, everything was stolen from me. It's not, not cheap stuff, you know, to go out and get. Um, plus now again, they have this moratorium out, you know, you can't use motorized mining equipment. Um, this, this past year, or last year with the sugar pine, that was supposed to be my first year of hard rock mining. Went out and spent $4,000 in hard rock equipment. Never used it once, you know, and that was taken from me. And the people I take it from me have the nerve to say that I stole eighteen hundred dollars of theirs, which I didn't. So why haven't um, you? Why haven't you filed to get your equipment back? What is what is up? Oh, I, I have. I've contacted uh, Sheriff Daniels in Josephine County, and his words to me were that they don't have the ability to handle any property loss, any theft of items because well, they're so understaffed, under budget, well, under everything that I would never get it back. Well, that's the sheriff's office. Why haven't you filed with the court? And, and do what? I mean, uh, I don't know. Honestly, like, with everything that's going on, man, it's it's. Yeah, people you across know. America, and I'm just telling you, you know, and I'm not trying to grill you about it, but people across America every day go to court and they file for you know small judgments, especially in a civil court, and you know, in at the end of the day. There's something that you can very easily, especially if you just bought it and you never used it. Well, you obviously have, you know, the paperwork. You're not going to spend four thousand dollars on something and not keep the paperwork for it. So you obviously no, have. The bill of sale. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have the bill of sale. It's brand new. It's yours. Why haven't you submitted that? Brand to... new to me. It wasn't brand new, but okay. Yeah. Well, brand new to it's you. Used equipment. Okay. Well, that's that's cool. But you still have the bill of sale, and why haven't you submitted that to the courthouse? went and, and got a claim placed against the people that have your equipment. Well, honestly, I mean, it's, it's something that I didn't want to do because I thought everything would be resolved and it just, just well, snowballed and it's gotten out of control. You know, I wanted things so what to are you gonna not do be about this way, that's for sure. What are you going to do about it? Well, you know, I guess that's, that's the choice that I have to make and that's what I'm going to have to do is go through the courts and, you know, again, it's something that I didn't think would have to come to, um, you know, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to go down any of these avenues, man. This isn't really the path that I chose. It's more one that I was pushed towards. You know, it's what else? You know, is there for me to do? I mean, I think Kevin, thanks I, to a small group. I mean, so much has been taken from me that there's nothing else. You know, it's yeah. You know, and if I don't do anything, then you know, I don't want to see it happen to other people. Well, do you see yourself getting back into mining? Yeah, it's, it's all I want to do, and yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, that's, you know, I would actually like to be a big voice for the miners and mining, and that was taken away from me, you know. it's So it's pretty difficult, you know. It's, I wasn't trying to uh, to work for any side or, you know, like with this instance, I just I didn't want to see uh, 
a bunch of people get slaughtered, you know, and that would have spread. It would have. Well, you know, that's like, that's like I, I said, to back, back to my endorsement. Um, I, you know, I do not think, you know, that you are a paid informant or anything like that, or as they would say, a paid troll. Um, or else you'd yeah, have, no, or, or no. else you'd have some new mining equipment. No, that, right now. and actually, uh, now, they but, did mention compensation, and that was yanked from me. So, which, when you've had everything taken, you know, that was a big reason why it was. Yeah, all right, I have to make. Are you there? Wow, that is interesting. I think he just said they did mention compensation, and that was yanked from me. Let's try to get him back on the on the line. You guys hold tight with me one second here. Let me see what I can actually do. That was a very interesting moment. I'm sure you'll all agree with me. Um, give me one second here, guys. We're going to try to bring that back up and see if we can get him back on here. About 18 people or so showed up. I didn't back down one bit. There's video hey. of it. I have video of it. Hey, Every single there? one of them has hey. video of it. You know, Kevin. And it's just, Kevin. they want to just destroy people any way they can. Kevin. Yeah. Were you talking that whole time? I was. I'm sorry, man. Okay. Do you realize for the last 45 seconds that our call dropped? No, not, not at all. Okay. The last thing that you left off saying that I heard was... Um, something about them offering money or something like that or, or something that you turned down or whatever it was? No, it was, um, you know, the, the word compensation was used and that never came to be. Um, you know, I said it, I felt like Charlie Brown going to kick the football, you know, and it getting yanked out from under you. Oh, um, and do you, like, how much, well, when they say compensation, do they mean compensation as far as reimbursement compensation, like for traveling expenses or compensation for uh, actions committed? I have no idea. It never went further than that. And, and that. And like I said, there was yanked right up from under me anyways, you know, it was. And that's in the, that's your JTTF uh, point of contact? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I say to that because I have to respond to that comment. Um, <clears throat> this is going to make you mad, actually, and, and it may make you a little bit mad. It might surprise you, man. You know, I understand but, how everything but, looks, but, how everything is, but but this is but we're going to open up the conversation after that so that you could talk to other people and, and stuff like that. Um, so you guys that are listening in right now, the phone lines will be open in one second. I just want to comment on what you just said. Um, I gave you that endorsement as far as not being a paid troll because, hey, quite frankly, um, I hadn't heard anything up until that point in the conversation, which would suggest that, you know, anything like that was really going on. And to me, I'm going to I'm going to just give to you uh, and I'm still and I still feel the same way, but I'm, I have to put something else on it now. I'm going to give to you my assessment. I feel like um, you, you did get taken advantage of. You did. You really did get taken advantage yeah. of. And and um, and uh, it was very easy for them to take advantage of you because you didn't really have a particular allegiance, if you will. So folks that are like that, that they don't really, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that you don't care about one side or anything like that, but uh, you weren't like, you know, so, like some of the people that are out there as activists. Some of the people that are out there as activists, they're, you know, you know what side they're on. So you weren't like one right. of those type of people. So it was very uh, easy to take advantage of you. Now, in taking advantage of you, um, for some reason, I don't know why you never said, you know, you never really said stop or no. I would have said no if they would have asked me to go and, and check in on that situation. Now, I'm going to tell you why I would have said no based off of what you just said. You have okay. to understand that what you just said is pr you're probably going to regret that for the rest of your life. And I'm going to tell you, you know, well, like, now I'm going to tell again, you, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to hide stuff or, you know, I want people to know, you know, I know, what happened, I know, but the truth I, of it and, 
I'm it's going to piss people why. off on both sides, you know? I'm going to tell you why, though. I'm going to tell you why. And because I don't, I really don't think you understand why. And, and I think that this is more than just a gotcha interview or anything like that. Um, you know, that, that may be classified as a gotcha moment, but it certainly wasn't a, a fraud out to be that way. But it, so that, that's why I want to explain this to you. What I think, honestly, what I think you don't get is anytime you were in um, cooperation with anybody that represents a federal entity, whether it be in an organizational capacity or whether in, a, in an official capacity, and the term compensation comes into play for committing acts against a, a group of people who are righteously standing for their rights, that in turn is there is no other f word for it except for informant. Now, based on your own words of what you just said, you know, they slipped the rug out from under you and it kind of, you didn't have good feelings about that. So with that being said is you did kind of expect to be compensated for it, but you weren't compensated for it. Now, do you get what everybody is saying? Because you're standing in your shoes and you're looking at it yep. a certain way as if... Yep. It's okay, but everybody else, if you, okay, let me just put it to you like this. If um, well, I understand what you're saying. You don't, you don't have to put it other ways. I mean, okay. when, it was, when the word compensation was used, I was already out there. So compensation to me would have been fill my freaking gas tank, pay for my hotel, you know, I, you yeah. know, as if you're doing anybody a favor or doing this. And the way the context that I was out there and how it was laid out to me was just all about peace. It was, you know do they want violence or not? And okay. again, I, I stand for that. I understand what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. And okay. I want people to understand how it was put to me. And, you know, and yeah, I understand. And I see, you know, more so now that, yeah, they absolutely lie. Um, I don't think they wanted violence. So I honestly don't. And that's, you know, that's just from my experiences of, uh, the tone that was taken with me, how it was portrayed. And, um, you know, I hope it wasn't, it's, you know, my, my whole thing was, it's, again, like you said, a double-edged sword. I mean, if anything escalated more than it was, uh, you know, how many lives would have been lost? And, again, these are the people that are going to be mad at me. It's, you know, I didn't want to see that happen. Okay. Okay. You know, it, it's, yeah. I All mean, right. well, yeah, this it, is what it I needs to be do. changed, you know. Ranchers get think... screwed. Miners get screwed. There's other ways, other means to go first. All right. Well, what I want to do is I want to personally thank you. Um, you know, I'm going to let the, I won't put in any more input from what I've already said. You've said what you've had to say. I've said what I've had to say. And um, I think that was just a very interesting closing that we just had. Um, you kind of blew well, my mind. Again, you know, like I said, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to hide stuff. I have no, nothing to no, hide about and it. I, I, want, I, respect I want it to that. be out there on all sides and, you know. I respect that. I really do respect that. And I appreciate that. But I think that it, I think what we um, more uh, just as a takeaway, one little takeaway note, I think more than uh, anything, what people should really think about what they've witnessed tonight is the fact that they're, you know, this is what the United States is comprised of. It's comprised of different minds. It's comprised of uh, minds of people who may not think like you and may not see the world as you do. And um, it's not to say, and, I, and Kevin, this is, I'm going to be honest with you, this is not necessarily an endorsement for you, but this is really just the truth of the situation. It's not to say that uh, these people are bad people. But it's to say that they just don't see the things that you see or have the capability to see the things that you see, just like you don't have the capability to see the world that they see it in. And when people that are in these organizations, these infrastructures like the JTTF, uh, look for people that they want to target for their usage, they target people like Kevin, because Kevin does not have that ability it just like you will not have the ability to see the world as Kevin sees it. Does that make Kevin a bad guy? I will honestly say no, but I, I will say no, but I will also put this uh, very strong caution there. Um, Kevin has the capability, in my opinion, to inadvertently be a very... Uh, the type of human that can cause a lot of harm 
if they don't understand the repercussions of their actions. And that's why being exploited by the federal government is not cool. That's why once you know that you're being exploited, you don't engage in it again. And, um, you know, it, it would behoove people to understand that if the federal government comes to you and says, we will compensate you for uh, your actions with a group of people, whether you're there or, you know, when they say it or before you go, as soon as you hear it, walk away. If the federal government okay. comes to you and asks you to get any information, I'm just I'm I'm speaking to my viewers because I want them to know this. Um, no, I'm agreeing with you. you know, and you know, firsthand, yes, walk yeah, away. Don't talk to them. Don't don't do it because it's not worth it. Because you get caught up in a system of a, uh, you know, just a whole system of drama and negativity that that you don't want. So the best thing to do is to stand on the core values of the Constitution. That is our founding doc document. If we if we want to overthrow the government, that means we throw that out with us. So we're not here to overthrow the government. We have to fix and correct things. That's what we're our mission and our goal is to fix and correct things. So that's where you get some purpose at stand on the constitution read it absorb it know what it means know what your rights are know that they're unalienable know that they are god-given and that's the reason why we are a christian country know that we should not abandon our religious status as a country because we open the door inadvertently for every other kind of extremist religion out there not that christianity is perfect but i damn sure don't want the other ones so, right. And you know, I'd like to say, I mean, exactly what you're saying there. I mean, to a point, um, the, the fact that I am speaking out about it and saying things, you know, and again, you know, I, I don't consider myself a stupid person. I, I do understand what I'm saying. I understand how certain people are going to take it. And I understand it's not going to be popular on either side of, you know, with a lot of people. Uh, the fact that I am still saying it and telling you firsthand how it's been should, should say what side I'm more on and I'm not, you know. I mean, it's, I can't, I, I, the, uh, the, end, the end game could be the same, you know, what, yeah. what I want to see happen and others could be the same, but the path could be different. That's, I think that's where the disconnect is. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I, like I said, I, I, as a person, um, maybe I, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I would sit down and have a beer with you because, uh, you're just a very interesting person. But um, as a trusted friend, I would be very nervous about that because uh, your decision making capabilities regarding situations that are so important like this. Um, I've just never seen anything like it before. And, and you know, I, I, I'm trying to be as nice as I can because I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm probably feeling the energy of some of my people that are out there. They're flying off the handle right now. They want me to cuss at you. They want me to say things to you. And I sh I'm sure you understand it and you get it. And I'm not going to Absolutely. do it. But at the end of the day, I, I am going to try to play uh, the, the most humble part of myself by saying, you know, I, I have to disagree with you on a lot of positions. But, you know, it, it's just that we see the world through different eyes. And, and like I said earlier, that's OK to see the world through different eyes. But it becomes dangerous um, when you don't know how you're being used. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and open up the line. Um, guys, if you want to call in and uh, ask Kevin Proust some questions, don't call him Kevin Prius because that is not his name. He is not a Prius. His name is Kevin Prius. Um, we, we have uh, the lines open right now, as a matter of fact. Um, the number is 856-265-0705. Uh, once you call in, you will be live. I will be monitoring the calls. If you call in for any kind of drama uh, or to just be a troll, I am going to shut you down. Okay, we have the first call in. Let's try to answer this. Hold on one second. Hello? Hello. 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 Hey, who's this? Hey, this is Brandon. Oh, Brandon yeah. Curtis. Yes. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> How did I know you maybe the first call? 
Hey, how's it going, Kevin? I'm going good. Good. Hey, just uh, I just wanted to get a few things for clarification, and I know I know you and I have chatted a little bit and tried to kind of calm the waves down, correct? Correct. So, but but I, I'm just confused on a couple things that I just want to get some clarification about. Um, last year, um, you know, around May of last year, we had a lot of conversations in regards to. I just want to go back, and I'm just curious about something in regards to that wanted poster and all that was going on. Uh, last year you had, uh, you know, you and I talked quite a bit about all that and, you know, kind of, you know, we went back and forth and we're trying to get that handled. Do you remember that? Yeah. So, you know, you, you confided to me that, I, I guess I'm confused because you confided to me that you had taken that money from the miners and that you were working out a payment plan to pay Rick back and uh, you sent me that in messages. So I'm just, I guess I'm confused. Oh, there could be no confusion, Brandon. Like I said, uh, just hold, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on, Kevin. You're breaking up real bad. Can you? Um, is there a way that you can get closer to your phone or turn it up and maybe get yourself in a good spot? Yeah. Uh, not not too much, but go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and try to uh, put you through anyway. I'll try to turn you up while you're talking. Go ahead. Okay, uh, and there could be no uh, I said, also told you that when one of the first went up, I was blindsided by that. Mr. Price would not speak to me. So, yeah, I, I did say that to buy some time, um, and I admitted that. I told that to you. I told that to Joseph, and I thought you would be the person that would have, you know, wanted to see everything or would see everything, and it didn't happen. I will say, yeah, there was one time where we were going to meet, and I didn't go. And that, again, that was right at the very beginning of it. And I guess it's right to me or going on my phone making threats, threat after threat. So I didn't feel comfortable meeting you. I mean, you know, and it was nothing personal. But when I'm told by, you know, you got a sister in me, I didn't believe it. You know, because every, everything before that had been just with groups of people. You know, I, I wasn't going to put myself into that position and explain that to you. Well, I, I guess I'm still confused because you, you know, you had befriended me last year, and we, you know, we talked back and forth, and we talked about mining, and we talked about, you know, the process and a lot of different things in Oregon. I was trying to get an understanding of mining, so I talked to you and I talked to Kirby back then as well, and and you had confided me with these things, and you had said that you had taken the money, and there was something involved with your ex-girlfriend or girlfriend who had taken the money, and you had worked, you had worked. Tell them, you know, I guess I'm looking at the screenshot now. It said that you had reached an agreement with Rick, the miner, and you, you were going to uphold that on your end. And you also had mentioned here that you were going to make a point to, uh, I'm going to refund everyone their money. So if you didn't take any money, why why were you making arrangements to refund it? I guess I'm confused. And I, you, when you get up, I'm going to put things both ways. I do recall uh, our conversations uh, when you contacted me asking me the place to mine and go. I do believe that was a time around your company name and all the little drama that you're involved in. So that's a double-edged sword down who people want to believe. Because I have screenshots as well of everything. I know that. Well, I'm, I'm not. Again, oh, well, hold on. This, this is just between you and I. This isn't organizations or people. This is just a. And I'll provide Sharad the screenshot to put up with his link because this this is just concerning to me because this was a conversation between you and I, two adults, and organizations. There's no talk about organizations in these conversations. It was just you and I talking. And you were going through this with me because I had asked you straight out about it. And you had confided in it. It, it, you, you put it right here in writing that you had um, t- taken, you know, the money was taken and it wasn't given to the miners. You made a payment arrangement to pay that back. Um yeah. And that you had made an agreement with Rick the Miner, so I guess I'm confused. It's, it's not a matter of believing everything out there. Let's don't spin this. Uh, I'm asking for a direct answer. Why was why did you admit to taking the money last year, and now you're saying it didn't happen? Which I have in writing. Rick the Miner is going to see my side of it. And when that happened, Joseph Rice would not allow that. We were not able to speak again. But Rick, Rick the Miner really isn't an issue of money being taken. You know, you just made a comment that you made an agreement with him. Where's the money? Because I, I went down, I went down, Kevin, I went down to Sugar Pie Mine to stand for the miners. 
not not to see their money taken. And you told me that, you know, it had been taken. Whatever the circumstance was, it was under your care through your PayPal account. And your girlfriend or whatever whatever you said had happened at that point in time, was, it was taken. And you told me that you had made arrangements to give the money back. And that has not happened to this day. I just talked to Rick the other day. I stayed in touch with him. It has not happened to this day. Well, again, I would talk to Kirby about it when I've been clear to everybody. People that have gone through the PayPal account, and then, I don't know what else you want from me. I didn't take the freaking money. My business partner, who I thought was a good guy, took it. All right, so so, can everybody hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, all right, so we're we're obviously you know uh, you know I I appreciate you calling in, Brandon. Hey, look, we're obviously not going to be able to find out on air, um, you know, this whole uh, uh, fiasco uh, that you guys are talking about as far as the money is concerned. Um, you do have a good point as far as screenshots are concerned, Brandon. Um, so I, I guess, I guess what, what, what is, what it's going to boil down to is this, cause we can go back and forth all day, but I know I have some place to be. I want to go ahead and get out tonight and I want to do a couple more calls. <laughs> so, uh, what I would like to do is this, Brandon, um, you send me those screenshots. We'll go ahead and, and get those, you know, uploaded. If it's anything, uh, that uh, you're talking about in those screenshots also, um, as far as, um, you know, mm-hmm. your, your concern, Kevin, make sure that you send me your information. And like you promised here on air already, upload your information that's going to exonerate you from the whole situation. <laughs> and I guess what we can kind of do is um, put this information out in public and allow the people to decide what they're looking at. I'm not going to touch it in any kind of way. I'm not going to finagle with anybody's pictures. I'm not going to do any of that kind of stuff. But uh once you send it over, I'll put it all in the same article, all in the same video, and we can go over it that way and, and do it that way. How does that sound on both sides? That sounds good to me. I, okay. Can I touch on the Burns Organ thing real quick, Sherrod? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, that, let's, that's let's, yeah, let's fine. move past the organ thing. That's, you know, that's old. But I do want to get to, to uh, Burns Organ. Um, you know, Kevin had admitted to me that he was compensated uh, by by a paycheck by the you know the Joint Terrorism Task Force. I think we've established that. But uh, no, I, I have no, no, a, no. I have a you question. Bring it up, and I would say, Kevin, you said you went for revenge, right? What's that, Brandon? Uh, you said you went over to Burns for revenge. Yeah, I didn't say that was the only reason. I said it was a factor in it, not revenge, but. I've been wrong, Brandon. And like I said, I counted on you to be the person that would say, yeah, let me see your side of it. You never did, but yet you go on YouTube and spout off about due process, but you refused me mine because it would hurt you guys. So let me ask you a question. You know, and, I, process, and, and, and I put this out there on behalf of all the Patriot community since I lost a good friend in Burns, Oregon, and, and Kevin, quite frankly, you didn't have a pot, you know, a, a, a tiger in that fight. Uh, you had, other than revenge, you sent me a Text. I'm going to send this to Sherrod. You sent us a text on February 11, 2016, bragging. You, you sent this text with a photo of Lavoie Finnick and my friend's memorial site, and you said how what an honor it was for you to watch your friends blow Lavoie Finnick's head off. Why would you send something like that? I never sent anything because like that. Because that ties into the revenge thing very well. Brandon, I never sent you a damn thing like that, ever. Well, we have the screenshots. We'll get that over to Sherrod to put up there with the rest of the stuff. I can make screenshots all day long. You obviously do, Brandon. Let's get some phone records. Let's see that one. I'm happy to do that. I'll even go as far as taking a lie detect test, as long as you take one right beside me. (laughs) Well, when I have our conversations, it's kind of hard to dispute. It'll burn you. It'll burn a lot of you. And and you you, you have family members that are, in fact, in New York that work for the FBI. Do you not, Kevin? So you have long ties with the FBI. You've been an informant much longer than you're saying. And I'll leave it at there. And I'm going to leave it with this, and I'm going to hang up and let somebody else call in. Here's the deal, Kevin, a piece of advice for you. When you tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. You never talk in circles. I don't have to change my name. I don't have to hide from who I am, Brandon, like you do. You're a disgrace to the Patriot organization. You're a scam. You're a fraud. I will get you for it, man. 
I will uh -huh. expose you. And it, it's coming tonight, man. Yep. I'm gonna, this is why I haven't done it. You, Joseph Rice, all of you, you fake patriots, you're going to get exposed, and you're going to you're gonna be sorry, man. That's what I tried to avoid. I even offered you a place What's to that? go when things got heated. Well, I'm just stating you facts, Kevin. You're the, one, you're the one you getting upset and gonna threatening gonna I'm not engaging that right with now. you, so you have a nice night, you guys. You're in a situation and you need to hide out. You remember that? Because I have no uh, screenshots, Brandon. Kev, Kevin, I'm not going to stoop to your level of threats. I got enough of those from you on my messenger. I'll make sure Sherrod has everything to post up there. And you're admitting to stealing the money, and you're admitting to paying it back, which you never did. And you want to call me a liar and a fraud. Look who's talking. You went through all this for a measly $1,800. And look at the situation you're in. You're sitting there, and you're licking the boot of the FBI. You're licking the boot of the federal government because they dangle the paycheck in front of your face. And who's the sellout? I don't think I need to say anything more. Have a good night. Yeah, yeah, Brandon. Ugh. Okay. You there? No, it was no surprise, man. I knew that was going to happen. Okay. So, uh, the line... Oh, we got Joseph Rice next or someone? Uh, I Look, the line is open for whoever wants to call in. I'm going right to the next caller because I was so serious about the fact that I, I, I'm not even going to bother to question... Uh, any of that stuff because I just want to there's nothing that I can say about anything that you guys just talked about because I'm going to have to see your evidence I'm going to have to see his evidence and that's really what's going to be the definitive uh, explanation of this anybody that's listening to this out there they can't even really gauge uh, the, the actual factual truth until they see that evidence so I'll be looking forward to the evidence from both sides I want to go ahead and move on to the next call though and whoever's out there this is Kevin's night tonight. I'm allowing him to answer whatever he wants to answer, get off his chest, whatever he wants to say. Um, it, this is his open platform and his ability to be able to convey to the community that he's not an informant, um, as he says, uh, as the, well, as so many people are saying here. So on to the next call, 856-265-0705. Again, that number is 856 856- Two six five zero seven zero five. The lines are open, and once you call, you have to realize that you will be live on air. You will be talking directly uh, to uh, Kevin and myself, and uh, you know. So just make sure that you're prepared for what, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you want to go to. Have it already prepared, and uh, it, again, we're we're. Uh, winding down with time here i don't have a lot of time left before i actually have to get out this door but again the number is 856-265-0705 all right someone looks like somebody just hung up you can go ahead and call back in you go ahead and call back in Now, Kevin, um, you know, we, yeah. we, uh, I know you're having a long night tonight <laughs> and, uh, I know this is, uh, uh, I expected it. Of course, of course, you know, cause there's a lot, you, you know, we talked the other day and there is a lot of, you know, history to go over. And I think you've covered just about everything that, uh, is probably out there on you. Just to be honest, you've stated on this show tonight, just and you've even went as far back as your um to the screenwriting stuff that's out there too. So, mm -hmm. like I said, I appreciate you cover, covering everything on this show, and the people that are listening to this, listen to it with an open mind, listen to it with an open heart, and you decipher it the way that you decide to. Um, I have I've given my analyzation of it, and I stand by that. Uh, Kevin, of course, gives his side, and he stands by that, and. You know, anybody else that has their side, they stand by that. Um, let me see here. Maybe it wasn't. But I think we've, you know, we've seen, with, you know, because of the Bundy situation and this situation, what's happening to people? You know, when we did speak briefly last night, you know, we touched on, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna make an example out of these people. I don't agree with that. You know, yeah, maybe there's some people that did have warrants or whatever. Some people that maybe should go to jail for, what, a week or so? You know, not... Yeah not hundreds of years, you know, life sentences, basically. Yeah. You know, they don't need to be set, made an example out of. I agree. And people need to wake up and see that. And to me, 
why why are you going to go out there uh, guns blazing or you know post your pictures on Facebook with your guns and stuff? Well, guess who they're coming for next? You know, it's, to me that's the wrong thing. And people need to wake up and understand you got to do things differently. You know, that's. Well- I actually agree with you you that we have to do things differently, a lot differently. This isn't the wild, wild west anymore. We're not going to take things over uh, the way we think the the government has drones. They have, you know, satellites and stuff like that. So people standing outside with guns ain't hardly hurting nobody. But um, that's why we have to, there has to be a revolution of the mind. And that right now is the number one thing that the government is targeting And that's what I want you to understand, Kevin. You know, I'm probably going to go ahead and close it out here soon. I'm playing with this, uh, uh, my phone thing here, and I think that it may have failed. Um, But that's what I want you to understand, though, Kevin, is this is a, as a, at the stage of time that we're in now, we're in a renaissance period. This renaissance period, in any kind of renaissance period, there's a renewing of the mind. There's a renewing of the spirit of the people, even if the times are tough. So we're experiencing tough times, but we're seeing a lot of brilliance come out of these tough times. And when when the history, let me me just, sure, let me finish this one thing. But but when the the history books are written, you're going to want to hear in the history books that, um, that you were on the right side of history, that you were one of the people that said, you know what, I stood up for what was right. I, I went for what was right. It's not hard to watch a bad guy flick or a movie or something from Hollywood to figure out who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. We all know that. How, how old are you, Kevin? 37. Oh, we're about the same age. We, we're almost exactly the same age. So it, with that being said, we know who the bad guys are. We know who the good guys are. Now, it's going to be hard for you moving forward to, to decide what you want to do with yourself, whether you want to try to, you know, and this is, I think this is a lesson for everybody listening. Don't take the paycheck. Don't, don't take the call. I don't care if they call your parents. I don't care who they call. Don't do it. And I think that's where the disconnect is, Kevin. And, and, and I want you to, I want, I want you to, but this is even more. So I want you to take ownership and acceptance of the fact of, how you have contributed to this. I, I see you all the time pointing the finger at everybody, 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 but you have not taken any ownership of self. And, and, and that, that's, I, I, I think I that's what's... You. It's, but, I'm, you know, again, it's, I am going to stand hey. up for myself on stuff like the sugar pine, but yeah, I, I've got myself into a mess Okay, here. Hold, hold on one second. We got an incoming call. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's grab that. Oh. Sorry, we, uh, okay, if you just call, try calling back again. I'm having a little bit of an issue here with this, uh, my phone plug-in. Oh, yeah, and again, uh, let me ask you this, Gerard. I don't know, you know, on all your beliefs on things, but, uh, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners are probably, probably somewhat big into, like, uh, let's say population control, um, okay. which is kind of a hot topic has been for a while. Where do you stand on that one? Just out of curiosity, and you'll see where I'm going with this. Oh man, population control has a lot to do with what the BLM is doing and a lot as far as a lot of these land grabs and stuff were being sectioned off into areas all over this globe, not just this country, but all right. over this globe where uh, they're trying to tear down all gender barriers. They're trying to t- tear down all racial barriers. And what I mean by those things is uh, in tearing them down is not necessarily whoever uh, is on the line. Make sure you hold for one second. Let me finish speaking. Um not necessarily tearing these barriers down, but, you know, uh, any kind of uh, people that identify with a certain group or a segment, they're trying to tear down those allegiances. The governments, the corporations and the organizations uh, that are all working together in a cabal fashion, they are all um, uh, they're all trying to make sure that the people's allegiances are, are with them. They're trying to take the eye off of God, whether that be your God, if you're in the Muslim culture or whether you're in the Christian culture, but particularly the Christian culture. The, in the Christian culture, we have something that no other uh, society has. We have the Constitution and it has our God-given rights that are on it. That's why they're unalienable rights. Now, what they want to do is take those things away. 
because if they can take those right. things away, that takes away our allegiances to God. Once the allegiances okay. to God are gone, we will have the allegiance to government. Now, what government wants to do after that is implement a plan. And this is a part of their agenda uh, where they will minimize the population to make it a workable population where we become nothing more than recycled parts of a system. And that's all that we right become now. good for. If you don't work or if you don't have a job, um, if you are not uh, going with the status quo, you become disposable in a system where you're uh, able to be recycled very easily. So population control is is real. We can see that through geoengineering. Right. Um, we can yep, see I, that. Hold through... on, let me stop right there because I, I do have a point to this, and I agree with you. Um, okay. You answered it perfectly, and I'm I, with you. I thought you wanted the whole now, spill. I was going to give you the whole if spill. There's revolution, if there's a revolution, would it be a revolution or a civil war with the divide that's already in the country? Which to me, you'd have kind of both. And on top of, you know, a possible uh, Third World War looming, that seems like an awful quick way to get your population control. That's just my, my standing. So, you know, it seems like an awful lot of people that are against me are walking right into the trap that they want to, you know, them to be walking, you know. Oh, yeah, abs into, uh, oh, absolutely. Well, that's in their documents. They have that uh, in their documents. I actually have something online called The Army After Nets. If people look up the Army After Next series that I have, it's a three-part series. I show you the, the documentation that is called the Army After Next documentation where that, that is what they want. They want the civil divides to happen. That's why they place informants in positions to get information for civil divides. What I want you to look into, Kevin, is I want you to look up a guy. His name is Darthur Perry. OK, Darthur Perry was back in the 50s and 60s. And uh, when the uh, black liberty activists uh, back then were they were fighting for their liberation, they were fighting for liberty, they were fighting for rights. Um, Darthur Perry was sent on the scene and he was a cool brother. He was a real laid back cat. He was socially adequate, um, just, yeah, you know, had all the functions that you would need at that time to survive in that kind of eclectic community and that vibe during that time. So when they put him on the scene, um, it, it was, he blended right in uh, perfectly, you know, but then he came out eventually and he said, I've been working for the FBI for all these years. And he had blended in, in into every organization and every activist community that was out there. And he had done the things that they were done uh, doing and promoting in the marches and the protest and everything like that. And the whole time he was receiving paychecks from the FBI for re returning information. I want you to look up who Darthur Perry is and how detrimental he was to the civil rights movement and, and how the civil rights movement was killed off. Uh, during that time frame and how the government infiltrated that situation. I believe your knowledge on that situation, on Darthur Perry's situation, will help you to identify with not only what, what you've been through, but what you probably shouldn't continue in the future to do. Don't I don't know whatever happened to Darthur Perry, but I can tell you this. For a very long time, he was not liked. And I, if, if that's indicative of anything... When we talked and you told me about that shot that was taken at your, your vehicle, I will say this. My, my prayer is this, because I, I wish no malice and no hurt on any man. Um, my prayer is this, that no one does anything to harm you or anybody that you love. But I would say this. You have to start looking outside of yourself and you have to start realizing that this is not a game. You cannot go up there accepting a paycheck to get, uh, you know, to go monitor people. That is not called goodwill. Like I, said, I, was, I was already out there when that was mentioned to me, and that was the point of, you know, even bringing it up. Was to I, I understand, away, brother, you know, but do you point, understand you know, how bad it sounds? Do you understand how terrible that sounds? I, yeah, I do, and but that's what you, like you just said, people need to understand if they ever call or ask look the other way you know okay. run, run the other direction fair enough fair enough so yeah. we have we have a caller on uh caller go ahead and state your name crystal crystal yes okay crystal how are you doing this evening um do you have any kind uh, of a uh, conversation or questions for kevin i'm doing good and um i do actually does so with pretty much no disrespect meant but is this his get rich quick scheme or I'm trying, and, but he didn't get paid. I'm just kind of trying to figure out why he did it, I guess. And it's kind of, he beats around the bush, and it doesn't, quick brief, 
why did you decide to go out there and do this? Well, well and so I'm not trying to beat around the bush. I, you know, if it seems that way, I apologize. It's, you know, I, I did it because of, again, the fear of there being massive bloodshed. And let's face it, I mean, that's almost what a, a small element of both sides wanted. And, you know, that would spread, at least in my eyes. It would have the potential to spread. And Both you know, sides what, wanted what that. What would you do I in that position? don't I remember either side saying sides. that that's what they wanted, <laughs> especially no, Ammon and you know, his group. I I'd, they I didn't specifically said that they didn't want that, name. but I go ahead. I, I didn't mention anybody's name. I said Yeah, I but you said both sides. There's both two sides. sides. You... I said small elements within both sides, not both sides, okay. small elements within. And, you know, okay. let's face it, that's the way it looked, and that's the way it probably was. I, I didn't want to see any of that. It, to me, it was, I do believe there needs to be change. Um, but the means that were taken, the avenue that was taken, I, I didn't really agree with it. Everything to me seemed like a giant setup. And that's not fair to anybody. It's not going to make any any positive change. You know, so far, everything that's happening, it's not for, you know, making things better, any positive outcome. It's it's hurting. It's hurting the Patriot movement as a whole. It's hurting people as a whole. You know, and we're just getting slapped around. You know, I mean, hmm. what, what would happen? You know, if, we, if people would uh, raise up and have a revolution, what would happen? You know, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, the military is going to, you know, most of them will So what side are you people, on? You know? Are you on the Patriot side or are you on the Fed side? <clears throat> I, I'm not on the side. Is there a? Of the um, but I'm not on the side of uh, patriots. Any patriots that wants to just jump to a revolution, I don't believe in that. Well, yeah. But... You know, I believe there needs to be change. I need, you know, there needs to be discussions. There needs to be a whole a larger group of people. Or, you know, the country as a whole needs to get together and be one voice. Not, you know, we we got to stop letting but... everybody get split and in different factions, and it's, that's got to stop. You know, we got to come together. But fake one. people. Fake people interjecting themselves in it and not being true is what hurts. I understand that, and I witnessed it firsthand. I, I did. And you I were, like, but hold up, with all, all respect, no. but you were that. You were fake, and you interjected yourself, and that's I where the problem I mean, I'm not saying that you're the problem in this, but that's blood, what, the, I mean, I everybody needs to be real uh, and say what they're there for and quit hiding behind false pretenses, I guess. Well, I, I don't see it that way at all. I mean, I tried to stop. That would be another problem. Seeing, you know, it, what good did it come? What good came out of right? you being there, yeah. I guess? It, in the long run, probably none. I, I don't know. You know, I, I Was it worth it? I ask myself almost every day, what, you know, why was I there? Why was I even asked? It's, you know, it, it, yeah, because it doesn't seem like much was accomplished. I mean... On, I mean, by listening to the interview, it doesn't seem like much was accomplished for you to be an informant, but you, I mean, was anything accomplished by you being an informant? I don't know the end game yet. In the end game there was? You know, I, no, I said, I, I guess in the end game we'll find out. I don't know. Um, you know, again, I understand where you're coming from, and, you know, I'd go more along the lines of what Gerard said, not, you know, yeah, people are going to use informant, but not in the, you know, not in the normal sense. I mean, I was not in the what? Sorry, I didn't I mean, hear you. I was trying to help, you know, I was trying to help kind of the situation as a whole, not, okay. you know, blow up in everyone's face. That's what that's all. And I can respect that, but it works out a lot better if you're real and you're true and you're yourself and you go in and try to help instead of hiding behind something that you're not, I guess, and trying to do it that way. Just. Well, I don't know how other way to do do it. I mean, maybe you maybe you have people, or you know people, or you yourself know firsthand how to do it. I don't because again, I'm not in the form. I don't, but I just think being real is the way to go. Being truthful and honest, and but that's just my opinion. But I mean, I well, I, I give you credit for being on the show. I do appreciate it. And but, you know, getting to hear your point of view and why you were there, and I think it takes courage to do that. And well, Much respect. You know, I wanted to see kind of both sides. I had to, you know, how else would you go in there? If, if here I am. This is why I'm here. You know, then it's 
nothing's learned. You probably and maybe that's my you probably if you if you were on it, you probably would have been. Re- they probably would have received you a lot better than than the way that they did, or you probably would have got more accomplished. Maybe but, so. I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty. I guess. Um, I know it is. You live and you learn. We all do it. So. But Amen. thank you for answering Amen. questions. I do appreciate it. All right. Thank yeah, you, welcome. Crystal. We appreciate you. Y'all have a good night. Thank Take you care. Now. You too. All right. Bye. All right. Let's keep the calls coming in. Um, I've seen a couple other calls flash up there on the screen. Um, we got, I got time for about two more calls. And my, my party that I'm supposed to be meeting, they're going to be pretty upset with me. So, But that's okay because I, I want to make sure I get this, guy, uh, this uh, information out for you guys that are out there. Uh, and Kevin's been wanting to do this as well to make sure that he can, you know, clear his name. So let's go ahead and bring, uh, Kevin, we have the next call for you. Here you go. 208 area code. You're going to be live on air. Hello. Oh, let's try this. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead and state your name. Josh. Okay, hello, Josh. How are you doing? And do you have any uh, uh, any kind of uh, conversation that you would like to have for Kevin tonight? Yeah, I absolutely do. You have to bear with me. I tend to just now get my voice back. Okay. Go ahead, Josh. We need him to. Uh, yeah, Kevin, are you there? Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Uh, I have a couple quick questions. Previous lady on the phone. Yeah. And you said that uh, the refuge seemed like a setup. Um, was that decided before you got there, or was that decided after? You know, I would say I probably had the feeling before, um, but you know, again, now I'm not speaking on behalf of anybody except for my own feeling. But it's how it looks, man. You know, it's and again, that's my personal opinion, and that's all it is. But that's that's how it looks to me. Well, what I'm basically implying is is that you've already admitted that, you know, what happened in Oregon previous at Sugar Pine Mine, um, you're, you insinuated you were an informant who just never got paid. So I just was curious if it was the same with Malia. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the end of it. I said I was just curious if it was the same with Malia, if, if you were trying to work as an informant there as well. It just it seems like you, you continue to talk in circles and, and avoid the, the basic questions. No, not at all. I mean, uh, again, I was thrown into a position that, that I didn't want to be in, don't want to be in, and, you know, to be quite honest with you, I don't, guess I don't know how to handle it. That's, you know, I'm not an informant. I'm not, you know, I, like I said, I just want to go mine gold. Um, I got thrown into something so- that I'm, Really, what makes you not an informant is the fact that you were never compensated what you were told you were going to be. No, no, not at all. The, the fact is that I wasn't trying to help one side, I was trying to help the situation as a whole. And I would, I mean, if you don't agree that you know, stopping bloodshed from happening or a massacre, you know, if I'm a, if I'm wrong for doing that or trying to do that, then so be it. But I don't think it helps any patriot movement, any true patriot out there, um, you know. And to me, you know, I'll say it right now, anybody that does want to go out and just start a war, yeah, I'm not for you. I, I will go against you on that. Um, you know, maybe one day we'll have to come to that. Not now, you know. So that's where I stand, you know. If anybody does want to go out and start a war now, then, well, I'm going to be one of the people you have to get through. Because if that makes me anti-American or unpatriotic, then so be it. But... I don't want to see a civil war break out. I don't, I don't, I don't think it helps you know, I think, I think that's where it goes back to talking in circles. You're implying that people are looking for that. When clearly, if you knew the objective of what was going on at the Malia Refuge, you know that that wasn't the case. The case was to empower the people there, to educate the people on their rights. The, the case was you know, there's, there's a lot of things that aren't adding up with you, and that's, that's the problem I have. And like I said, bear with me. I lost my voice. I'm getting it back. You know, okay. with what went on at Sugar Pine, you know, what, what you've been accused of, what you've admitted to already, you have zero credibility. I think that's the problem that, that you're running into. And nobody's going to have any respect or, or view you as a credible person 
with your actions. You, you show, you, it's kind of like um, using a Bible reference. Um, <clears throat> you bear no fruit. The only thing you've brought so far has been disgrace. I don't see anything good coming from you. So to sit here and justify you know, everything that you've, you've tried to accomplish, I went out there to, to do good, yet you say on, tell, you know, on the radio with that last person, you know, um, I, I don't know, nothing good came out of me being there. What are you even doing? I stated that in the interview, what I was doing. I mean, that was, I made that clear as could be. And I mean, if you think I'm talking in circles, it's not my fault. You don't understand, you know, everyday words. I mean, I'm not being rude, but, you know, not for nothing, but that's the way it is. You know, it, it's, it's a bad situation all the way around. And that's what I'm trying to get out there. People need to wake up. I mean, you know, Spend a dollar ninety five, whatever. Get a simple background check program. Look at look up all these people that you're following. You know these fake patriots. They're you know great charges. Uh, just felony after felony after felony. And you want to stand by those people? So be it. I don't. You know that's that's what it is. Isn't your cousin that's an FBI agent? He's not an FBI agent. No, he's a Joint Terrorism Task Force mm. uh, NYPD, and he has nothing to do with it. Mm. So. And, uh, you know, yeah, he has nothing to do with it. He's in NYPD, so. I'll tell you what, man. I think the best resolve for you is this. Honestly, because so far you've brought nothing positive to, to any movement trying to help out in empowering people and educating people on their rights. I think the best move you can make is just to um, go back to trying to mine on your own and stay away from people who actually want to make good changes for for the United States. I think that's the best route for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you think that. You, I mean, yeah. if you can correct me and tell me something you've done that has been positive for the movement, I'd love to hear it. Well, I guess you'll see. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Personally, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing those screenshots. What's up? Go ahead. You I said I'm looking forward to seeing those screenshots. From both your side and and also uh, Brandon's, it's it's going to be interesting to see everything laid out on the table. So that's really it. I, I just I think that you should kind of you know reflect and think think about that. Just you know, if you're wasting your time, because it sounds like either one of two things: either you are exactly what everybody thinks you are, which you've already admitted to almost being, um, or you're just wasting your time. And you know, you've got your heart in the right place, but not your mind. And in either way, I think. Uh, I think maybe this should be the end of it for you and just go about your business. That's, that's all I want. All right, um, well. But at the same time, when you're driving up the road and someone shoots a tire out, when you said nothing, you've been quiet for a while, you know, it's, you know, you do have to defend yourself too. Okay, well, I appreciate you calling in, Josh. Thank you for giving us your uh, questions and your point of view. I appreciate that. Uh, and, and are you good on your angle? Yes, sir. All right, now, thanks for calling in to the All Rights Matter Show. We appreciate that, Josh. Thank you, sir. All right, Bye. All right guys, we got time for one last call. One last call. And I, I will make it very brief for you. Um, just one last call. We'll probably do a follow-up show um, uh, a little bit later on so we can go over all the evidence together. Um you know, after it's, uh, you know, submitted by uh, everybody. So we'll, we'll go over all that together. Like I said, guys, you know, if you're listening to this out there uh, live streaming, you know, uh, just wait until you see the evidence. Um, it, it's very easy to listen to stuff and to develop uh, opinions uh, based off of what you're listening to. I would say that uh, I believe that a few things have been uncovered here tonight in this interview and, uh their, their, you know, opinions can be made off of those things that were uncovered. But I'd say to get the full spectrum of the truth, let's wait until, uh, you know, as Kevin promised, you know, and, and I, I'm sure he'll hold true to that because he's been good through this whole situation. So I have no reason to believe that he's lying to us or anything like that. But as Kevin promised, he's going to submit his information as uh, 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 Curtis uh, Brandon has promised. He's going to uh, submit his information as well. So uh, Kevin Proust, uh, Kevin, Brand, uh, I'm sorry, K 
Kevin Proust, Brandon Curtis, they're both going to submit their information. We'll go over all that. That's a, that's a non-issue at this point. The number is, um, uh, you know, 856-265-0705. We'll go over the evidence later on, do a separate show. Uh, I'll write an article on the corporate media about it, so we'll have it out there. But one last call, 856-265-0705. If you want to go ahead and hop on the line and get any kind of questions in, now would be the time to do so. If not, forever hold your peace. And, and you know, Sherrod, it's almost like, um, you know, I, I have to go with every everything that people in the Patriot movement believe in. You know, you're not allowed to stray or have your own opinions on certain, you know, incidents you know it's mm -hmm. you know that's that's a big problem for me mm -hmm. you know because so i'm my own person i'm free mind and will and i don't have to agree with everything you know that's that's how it is and okay. if people have a problem with that that's you know i'm i'm not exactly one of the sheep that are just going to be led by anybody i mean because the small group that i'm talking about you know we talk about how corrupt the government can be well it's almost like these guys have that aspiration they they want to become them you know, that, that's how it looks from my point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're not, it's not a true patriot well, stance at all. Well, I, I you know, I, I don't want to, me, I'm out of the conversation at this point. So that's what I'm saying. I absolutely just agree to not agree to anything anymore because I want the, the, the audience at this point. We I've already given my analyzation of everything. Um, and, and I appreciate your contributions that you're putting in too, but... I just want to make sure that the audience, because I, I've been hearing, you know, from folks that they've just been wanting to talk to you, been wanting to ask you questions and been wanting this interview since uh, we had talked about it a month ago. But um, so I just appreciate you coming on. But um, yeah. I, I want to try to do one last call. Um, I seen the number pop up here and trying to get this to work. 856-265-0705. If that was you that just called, call back in. You have a couple more seconds, and uh, I'll try to go ahead and answer that again so we can go ahead and get you live on the air. Oh, and uh, earlier you asked me about why didn't I, you know, speak out earlier, do this, do that. And, you know, a big reason for that is um, anytime, and you see it in uh, pretty much all the topics you cover, when somebody does that, you just get met with uh, just a camera whore, camera whore. I don't, I don't want any of that. I didn't want this. I don't even want to be doing this now. I, you know, but how else are you going to get your side heard? You know, it wasn't going away, and it, it needs to be heard. Yeah. Um, you know, and I hope one, if the one thing people take from it, whether they hate me, disagree with me, or, you know, agree with me, is I just hope everybody just wakes up a little bit. You know, see all sides. Just listen to things. Don't jump to conclusions and watch out for, you know, different traps. Just... You know, try to stop and think before doing anything. All right. Well, let's go ahead and grab this call real quick. See who this is. All right. Yeah, I got one quick question for him. Yeah, who's uh, who? Who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is Rod Chandler. I'm with Idaho Three Percent. Oh, okay. How are you doing tonight, Rod? I'm doing pretty good. All right. Go ahead. Just Rod. one. You're live with Kevin. Go ahead and speak. Just one quick question. Where do you draw the line between a paycheck and what's right? I understand you say you didn't get paid, but you still were planning to take a paycheck. So where do you draw the line between a paycheck and the right thing to do? No. Like, when, like I said, I was already out there when that was even mentioned to me. You know, it's, it, it's not about that, and it's not against the Patriot movement at all. It's... You know, I, I've taken the unpopular stance of calling BS where I see it, you know, and, you know, what else am I supposed to do? I, I mean, to me, I don't know why more people don't. It's, you know, just because it's the unpopular thing to do. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. It's, I've, I've witnessed a lot recently being out in places that, where I have seen more of both sides, you know, yeah, there's, it's just corruption is idiots on both sides, you know, that's one thing I've realized. And with everything going on, it's it's really hard, man. It's it's hard to know, you know, who's doing things for the right reasons and the wrong reasons. And again, you know, I'm this isn't about patriot movement. It's not about three percent. Not about Idaho three percent. Uh, it's you know, it's just certain individuals. And I'll, I'll say it's not even about Brandon Roy as much as it's being made out to be. You know, I did offer him a, a place to get away to if he needed to. You know, and. 
because I didn't want, you know, not knowing where he totally is on any list or anything, but where his true stance is, I don't agree with, you know, the route that's going to be taken. And they're going to be, you know, people being made an example out of. Yeah, <clears throat> some people should get in trouble, but not to the extent they're going to. And, you know, it's, again, like I had just said to the previous caller, I, I just saw Sherard, uh, people just need to make more informed decisions, you know, and certainly don't do what I did. You know, I mean, I went in with it with the best of intentions, trying to prevent any loss of life, any bloodshed, and that was it. That was, that's all I wanted, you know, and in doing so, I had hoped that would at least earn me the, you know, the ability to be able to speak my side and, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I don't know. It's, I thought things would be different, that's for sure. Um, I don't regret what I did. I re- regret how they turned out. You know, maybe I didn't portray myself the best way or make things as clear as I should have or could have, but that's, you know, that's on me. And nothing else I could do. Um, you know, like I said, I just you, wanted to see... You, you, you say know, that you admit you, you what you did was wrong, and then you turn around and say that you don't regret what you did. How can you not regret it if you know it was wrong? Well, wrong in the sense of what? I mean, I'm saying how I how I relayed things, how I've gone about things may have been wrong, although, you know, what I tried to do was with the best of intentions and was right. You know, I'm not going to back down from trying to stop bloodshed in a situation like that or any situation. You know, it, it's not worth it, especially in a situation like this where it could spread. I mean, you know, as well as anybody that's near any uh, patriot movement, there, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to just rise up and fight, no questions asked right now. And, and, it's, and anything, you know, not even just patriot movement, any any type of group, there are those people. And to me, that I mean, that hurts everybody. I mean, it helped us how, you know, we wouldn't win, that's for sure. You know, and anybody that thinks, well, we can just rise up against the government tomorrow, overthrow them, and win, you know, they're, they're cuckoo. You know, it's impossible. So, and, you know, that's right there. It's not saying give up, go, you know, go run and hide, because I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, like, use your heads. You know, everyone put their heads together. Get together as one group. Uh, make more people aware, you know, and use one giant voice. You know, One giant voice idea. to stand up for the Constitution against the corruption. It's that simple. Shrod, I love your show. I love you, man. Thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate your time letting me on the show tonight. Have a great night. All right. Thank you, Rod. Thanks for calling in. You have yourself a great night. All right, guys. That That's it for the callers for tonight. Um, we, we've been live with Kevin now for about two hours and 45 minutes. Um, Kevin has answered a lot of questions. He has went over his full history that is out there on uh, Google search results. Um, now the only thing that's left to do is, um, you know, to get, of course, the, the evidence that, uh, that he's going to be uh, submitting tonight. Um, we'll also have Brandon's evidence too. Um, and you'll be able to go over Kevin's, uh, information and decide, you know, for yourself, um, where you stand on the Kevin Proust, uh, situation. And again, it's not Kevin Prius. I will never say that again. It's Kevin Proust. Um, but you'll be able to decide where you stand on that. And, uh, you know, and, uh, Kevin, I, I can tell you this, uh, you know, I just wish you the best of luck. I do. Um, you, you know, you, you know how to find me, you know how to reach me. You have my phone number. So, uh, yep, you know, we'll, I, I'll make sure that once this is rendered out and, uh, once everything is up and once you submit your, your links and your information to me tonight, that you get a copy of all this so you can go over it so that you can see, I didn't edit any of it in any kind of way. Um, and that I was fair in putting your links in the description below this video. I want you to know that we're going to be fair at every juncture of the way and that we're only going to base our um, our opinions based off of, you know, what you've pretty much said here tonight and the evidence that you're going to present by the morning time. Is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, with that being said, 
uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you for, uh, you know, clarifying things. I guess you could say if, if things, uh, were clarified for some folks that had questions, um, I'm sure there'll be new questions, but, uh, like I said, we'll cover all of that at a later date. Um, and, and again, Kevin, do you have anything that you'd like to go ahead and briefly close out with, um, you know, before I go ahead and shut everything down? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I would just like to reiterate and ask people, you know, to just read what gets put out there. Um, you know, don't just don't do that prejudgment. You know, oh, he's a liar. He this and said this and said. You know, I mean, can't read. Really believe everything you read on the internet, especially since you know anybody that speaks out against me. I mean, you know, I wasn't the type of person that went out there and just made up stuff and did it to them. You know, and at times it would be nice to. You know, I wanted to, but I've seen the effects of what it does. And I would never do that to a person, you know, just to cause those lies and, and the problems it causes, it's horrible. And, you know, my, my only end game in this is just trying to wake people up. I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to release that I don't want to. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I don't want to. It is going to, it's going to hurt some people and, you know, so be it. Enough is enough. It's, you know, people need to see the truth and, you know, I'm, I'm sure they'll be shocked at some of the people that they're going to discover is actually, oh, geez, worse than, you know, they're not exactly informants, but actual paid agents, you know, and again, <laughs> you, you know, it is what it is, man. All it's right. not popular by either side what I'm going to do, but so be it. All right. Well, we know uh, right now you were just fulfilling the role of Mr. Unpopularity anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> It, it, yeah, well, you know, it, it is. In the end, hopefully it's worth it, man. You know, hopefully people understand, and you know, at least people say, yeah. "Wow, I don't want to do what that freaking guy did." Yeah, you know? yeah, I, I, I'm gonna bet that a lot of people are gonna say that. I just judging based on the calls, but you know, hey, Kevin, look, man, you, I'm no stranger. I gave my analyzation of it already. I just, I have to say this in, in closing. You know, sometimes we we make our bed, and sometimes we have to lay in that bed, and I think you understand that now. Um, with that being said, um, again, thank you for coming on. Um, you know, if there's anything that comes out of this, as far as the evidence and stuff is uh, concerned, I, I'm not going to close the door for you doing a second show on the all rights matter show. You are welcome to come back to do a second show after this evidence is uh, submitted and, uh, we can go over that evidence and you're welcome to speak on, on behalf of that in case, you know, there's any questions about it. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, Kevin, you have yourself a good night, brother, and thanks for uh, calling into the All Rights Matter show, and we'll get up with you later. All right, thanks, man. All right, now. Hey, guys and girls that are out there, I appreciate you listening in tonight to the All Rights Matter show on Anon Radio Live. Um, I'm seeing that we have actually a rather large uh, following here tonight, um, receiving plenty of messages. Um, Some hate messages from the people that I'm uh, late seeing uh, and also some messages uh, (laughs) uh, uh, from so many people out there that are showing love. So I appreciate the messages of the people that are showing love. Um, I appreciate everybody that's called in tonight to to the All Rights Matter show. This is what I could say if you want to support the All Rights Matter show. This is what would help me out the best. Once this video was put up on YouTube, what I would like for you to do is go to the description section below this video and download my app in your phone. As long as you have my app, you'll have access to all the content that I do like this. I've done now multiple interviews that are like this, that are jam-packed with a lot of information and moments that you're not going to catch on any other show, you know? So we go in depth here. We, we take our time here. It may take a little bit longer, but we, we, we get a lot done here. So with that being said, I'd like for you to download my app. When you have my app downloaded, you'll have access to these interviews. You'll have access to the live shows. Uh, You'll have access also to my articles that I write. So uh, for Uncorporate Media. So I want you to, uh, you know, make sure that you have all of those things. Also, um, if you want to join me in in helping to, uh, you know, go the right direction with All Rights Matter, I'm building an army. 
and we're getting excited. We're getting excited about the, the possibility of tomorrow. We're getting excited about the Constitution. We're going to be helping people understand and learn. So whether those people are within the Patriot community, the Black Lives Matter community, it doesn't matter where you're at. You need to know what's in the Constitution. You need to know about your God-given rights. And I, I, we're going to start uh, venturing off into to that uh, area where we're helping to build this army of people. So uh, we've actually already started. I have quite a few people now that are, that have come, you know, amongst all rights matter. And I appreciate those people, but I'm looking for more people. I'm looking for people that want to fill uh, maybe some specific roles that we have coming up that are going to be nationwide all over the, this great country that we live in. So there's a lot that we can do. Um, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure that we can build uh, regarding unity and we can do it under the all rights matter umbrella and we can really take charge and we can take back the narrative of what America is supposed to be uh, under underneath this very unique concept. So I would ask that you join me, make sure you download the app. Uh, if you enjoy content like this, you can always feel free to uh, subscribe to my YouTube. You can always feel free to donate. Uh, the donate button is, will be in the description section beneath the, this YouTube as well. Any donations go towards, you know, making sure that equipment is up, that, uh, you know, the, the lights stay on and that we can keep providing information like this. It's not just me providing this information. There's other people that are, you know, invested in this as well. So thank you for everything. Thank you for listening in, guys. And as always, guys, stay tuned. I'm going to be posting up that information. I'm going to do a full-fledged article through Uncorporate Media where we're going to place out all of those documents, guys. We're going to get everything from uh, Kevin Proust. We're going to get everything from uh, Brandon Curtis. We're going to put it all in one article on Uncorporate Media, and we're going to let you guys decide. We're even going to run a poll there. We'll let you guys decide. So stay tuned for that, guys. I got a lot on my plate right now, but I'll have that up sometime within the next 24 hours for you. All right, guys, as always, thanks for listening to the All Rights Matter show on Anon Radio Live. Stay alert. Stay alive.